Hey, Nathan here, helping you become a better jungler. This is going to be my first champion specific guide that I'll be releasing on my channel. I've done close to around 200 videos now talking more about jungle fundamentals, sort of a macro approach to the jungle position. But this is going to be a very comprehensive deep dive onto Xin Zhao. The reason I have chosen Xin Zhao first is because I get a lot of new people joining my channel asking about, you know, I'd say I've switched from top, what champion do you recommend me playing? And I'm going to literally say to start off this at Xin Zhao, I do recommend, and this is going to be a great guide for you to accelerate your learning process and give you a very, very good baseline to how you want to be playing Xin Zhao. So this is going to be a season 10 guide, but I think a lot of stuff in here, I mean, I've been playing Xin Zhao for a while now. I could have applied three seasons ago and probably two seasons from now, unless the Xin Zhao gets completely reworked and it's going to be still applicable. I do talk a lot about the mindset and more champion identity of Xin Zhao. So I think this will be very helpful, whether you're a new player, if you've been playing Xin Zhao for a while, I think this might give you a fresh perspective, even if you're a veteran as well. So let's jump into the first up table of contents. So I will be starting off with background info, the information that I use to make this guide, everything in here is going to be very, very practical. And that's what I wanted to design this guide for. I could talk for hours about theory, about Zin, but again, everything in here is going to be very useful for you to apply straight to your ranked games and you will start figuring things out and getting results quickly. But I mean, I can't just say this is going to be, you know, get rich sort of like you're just going to be diamond or challenge instantaneously from watching this stuff in this guide. You will need to practice it, but maybe you can revisit this um, guide. Um, but also talk about some bonuses as well that's going to help you be on this guide. So I'll be jumping into the pros and cons. Champion identity, it is bolded here. <clears throat> Excuse me, and you will be seeing like what the hell does it mean by saying hydraulic press here. I will dive deeper into this, but the reason it's bolded is that everything around this guide is essentially based on this champion identity here. So this is very, very important um, topic that I'll be talking about. So the standard runes, skill order, item builds, uh, practical combos. I do say practical combos in here because there's some stuff that combos that you can potentially do on Zen that might work as well. But this is, again, only stuff that I use that worked for me and is not going to be unrealistic to your own ranked solo queue games. Early jungle path options, champions you are good against and bad against. So this, there will also be, so this is also going to be a style of like sort of lecture these slides, but... There will be a lot of gameplay packed into here as well. This is going to be a pretty beefy part of it. So this will be a pretty long section, but again, very valuable, valuable stuff. Use of vision. This is going to be sort of talking a little bit about vision in general in League, but how you also want to be using it and the importance of it for Zin Zhao. Use of control wards and your sweeper trinket. Uh, bad early start and recovery. And I think this is always really important to add into any guide is how your mindset needs to be when you have a bad early game. And obviously Xin Zhao has a reputation of you're really only an early game champ. I will talk more about my thoughts about that later in the guide, but I think that that's a great sort of ga gameplay that I'll finish up on. This is going to be a game of me recovering very well, but I also still will be talking about the mindset that I did to do that. It wasn't just like pure luck the very, very important stuff in there as well. And we'll be closing out helpful tips and a Q and a section. I did ask on my community section on my YouTube, what do you guys have questions about and making a Zin Zhao guide? So I'll be answering those questions in this, at the end of this video. And also the helpful tips is just going to be stuff that just sort of rules and stuff that I followed when I played Zin Zhao to test him out. That helps me, um, you know, win games, play the champion effectively. So bonus resources, this is going to be stuff that is going to be, I don't want the conversation to end on this guide. I will be putting out six lives in our commentary videos, my gameplay, probably about one per day. And I'm going to be doing it in high ELO and some in low ELO as well, just to show that the material in here works for all different ELOs. So it's going to be applicable to whether you are, you know, just starting out or you're like Diamond Plus. I will be also opening up a Zin Zhao channel over on my Discord channel. Discord server, you can join with the link here. There'll be a link in the description below as well. Again, don't want the conversation to end here. If there's stuff that I've missed in this guide, I'd love for you to jump on there and discuss it with me. And I'll be there. I'm there pretty much every day. We've built a really awesome community there if you want to join that. For also just jungle in general. But if you want to join just for Zin Zhao, you can definitely do that as well. And I'll also be putting out an updated written guide. 
that I'll have on my website. This is probably the only true full video guide I'm going to do for this season for Zinzao. But again, based on the conversations, let's say we have in the Discord server, I will be constantly updating that on my website to make sure that that's going to be an up-to-date guide. Let's say if Riot randomly start changing Zinzao or a new item comes out or something like that. And the other thing as well is I'll also be doing a one-hour coaching session giveaway again on my Discord. It's probably going to last around a week. So if you're watching this video a couple of weeks um, from now, then I the giveaway is going to be gone. But if you're obviously just watching this and you've seen the date that this was published, one week you have to enter that. And I'm going to be doing a Zinzao one-hour coaching session again based on all the material here. Ideally, if you're entering it, you've applied this stuff and we sort of want to take things to the next level. That's my ideal for people who are gonna enter that giveaway. All right, so those were the bonus resources. Let's start jumping into the meat of it now. So background info. So a bit about me, I was challenger season three, four and five. I was ranked two on the Oceanic server in season three. I had three accounts in top 10 season four and season five, I was probably like top 50. I did take a break here and there off the game from season five to season, um, last season, season nine, but my main account is currently Diamond One. This is it here, 57% um, win rate at the moment. Haven't played as many games as I would like this season, but that's just giving you some background info. I have played a total of 155 Zin games over 12, the last 12 months, so this is not me just playing a bunch of games. I'm like, oh, here you go, this is my field report of me playing you know, X amount of games. Like this was very much, I did have experience going into it, but this guy was very, like those Zinzao games was just here and there. This was a very honed in specific laser focus on Zinzao um, games that I played to create this guide. And that was 30 consecutive ranked games that I played over a span of three days, three, four days. And it was on patch 10.14. But again, I think the stuff in here is going to be applicable for seasons to come, but only things that might change might be the items and runes, but this is just sort of telling the relevance, the, how relevant the um, this guide is. And all these games were played on my Diamond 4 account. So it wasn't played on my Diamond 1 account, which is now Diamond 3 that I got from this guide. I had a 60% win rate, 8, 30, 18 of those 30 games were wins, 12 losses, and I also did a pretty good breakdown here just to give you an idea of the way that I played in those games. So 12 of those games, I'd say, was a pretty hard jungle difference, hard carry. Six of them, I played okay, did my job. Could have won if I was better. So I was pretty hard on this. I was thinking some of these I could have potentially put into not winnable category, but I just I sort of just wanted to leave the not winnable section in um, for just Trolls AFKs, which was around four of the 30 games. But I definitely think at least probably six of those, if I was a little bit better, I could have won, which would have really advanced my win rate to around 70, 75 plus. So again, proof in here that this stuff in this guide is going to work for you if you apply it. So this is the games specifically that I played. So this was day one. And as you can see right here, this was me sort of testing. I sort of really struggled the first day, um, even to the point where I was like, oh, I just suck at Zin Zhao. I shouldn't make this guide, but I stuck at it. Day two, I had a lot more success. I started to get the hang of things. Um, then moving on to day three, again, doing pretty well. And day four, I think I really, really started to get it. And again, this is only across 30 games. If I kept playing, I think I really could have advanced my win rate even further. But I wanted to give you very specific, these are the games, these are my builds and so all that stuff. If you want to uh, pause it, you can also check my OPGG. Again, the account is Nathan Mott with a zero. This, the account that the server that's on is Oceania. So that gives you a really good rundown. This is all the information in here is going to be based on these 30 games that I played. Again, all right, jumping into the pros and cons of Zin. So, um, I did talk a bit about this. Easy and champion to pick up and learn. No real skill shots. His W sort of is a skill shot, but I will talk about how you, that's going to be not really a skill shot. Very strong ganker. Also has the option to level 2 gank, which I'll talk more about. Good jungle clear and sustain, so you don't have to really think too much about kiting camps and stuff like that, but I do recommend you do clear properly still. But again, if you're sort of new to the jungle, you don't exactly have to think about that. Excellent counter ganker and his combo damage is very reliable. And again, this sort of is also tied into easy easy champion to pick up. But more often than not, I'd say most of my games I was counter ganking, then actually ganking. And I think he's a very effective, probably one of the best counter gankers in the game. And another benefit is you can solo dragon at five minutes with smite. Obviously, dragon with dragon souls with season ten 
have, have become very important. It's always a little advantage there if you can solo dragons at five minutes. So the cons are there's no reliable hard CC on Zin. It does take some time to set up your CC, which is a little bit annoying, but he doesn't have point and click CC abilities, which I think is always a negative for a champion in league. Very poor scaling to late game. He definitely does. Like that's obviously been a pretty big consensus for Zin over the years, but uh, definitely that is definitely a con that I have noticed in the research that I did in this guide. No easy escape tools. He can't jump over walls. It's always, you know, going to hurt you a little bit if you, can only like go in and then that's it. And the other thing as well is that once you've done your full combo, you're not very useful and pretty easily cardable. So you need to be very, very specific about how to use that combo. Again, I'll be showing you examples of that in this guide. All right, so the big thing in here is just stating, going back to the late game scaling, you are on a timer. And I broke this down about, I mean, how specifically my games went being on a timer. There was definitely a direct correlation between the amount of deaths I had and winning and losing. The longer the game went, less chance of winning, which obviously ties into how many times you potentially die. But the average game times across my 30 games was around 27 minutes. That's the ideal area you want to be ending games on. That's when you're most effective as in Zao, when I feel like the game's still in my control. So sort of breakdown of those 30 games, zero deaths, I had 95% chance of winning. One death, about a 90%. Deaths, two deaths, three deaths. So still all very, very positive. I was most likely going to win those games. Um, this also wasn't the final score. This was more like if, um, if I had like this amount of deaths in like, I think it was the first 10 minutes. So if I had zero deaths by the first 10 minutes, I pretty much was had like a 95% chance of winning. I think there was only one game where I had zero deaths by 10 minutes. I still lost. So um that sort of is a breakdown. But as you, as you can see here, once I get to the four death range, I was just not winning games. And again, I think this was in the first 10 minutes as well. So this is like a, a range you want to be very much avoiding because the, the deaths also equates something to obviously average game time as well. If the more you're dying in like these later stage team fights, the games are becoming more and more out of your control. So definitely want to sort of stay in this three death minus range. And once you start getting past that, again, it's danger zone. Okay, so now moving into the champion identity slide, and this is the one that I did emphasize in the table of contents being pretty important. You might be thinking, what does he mean by a hydraulic press? What even is a hydraulic press? There is a, a picture here that this is what it looks like. Basically, it exerts tons and tons of pressure on an object, and it just pretty much destroys everything. There's a really, really good... Um, YouTube channel that's actually pretty satisfying to watch as well, um, showing how this is used to break. I think it even breaks a diamond. He does. He tests all these things, like a phone book that's like really thick, like destroys that as well. So, I actually recommend going on that and watching these those videos just to really get into the mood and again the mindset of this guide. So I found this so effective for me. Every time I'll come into the loading screen, I'll be thinking to myself as I'm Zin Zhao, I'm going to be a hydraulic press this game. And I think it was such a good analogy to adopt to even League in general because the crushing process itself, and again, you'll see in those videos, it's very slow. It's not just like a, that's it, it's crushed. Like it actually slowly goes down and that's what you want to be doing. It's like, it's pretty rigid. It's like, it's not very flexible, but it's unstoppable. And this is talking more about Zin sort of being like a one dimensional champion. But if applied correctly, it's very, very unstoppable. And it works so well for me in my games. I do have three in-game examples I'm going to show you of this working so well. And I'll also note as well that these three examples, these were all before turret plating left at 14 minutes. And this was without Rift Herald. So I played so much pressure that it broke. And this is only three out of the 30 games. I probably did this in around eight, nine of the games. So very, very effective. And again, I'll show you the in-game examples later. Important things to also note is you can't just be reckless with this. You still need to be smart and be thinking, you know, where's the enemy jungler? Uh, you still want to also be trying to be efficient clearing jungle camps. You can't just sit there with one, your red buff, and just be camping the lane forever. That's not how it works. So I will talk more about how I did that in my games. Uh, but the good question that I would always ask myself in the game is like, am I a hydraulic press in this game? Am I pressing this certain lane, this certain area of the map enough to like make it snap? And that's the mindset you go into. You are uh, hydraulic press, you're going to apply so much pressure and you, it could take a little bit longer, but it will eventually snap. That's the mindset you're going to be in. And it did for a lot of my games. And I was able to snowball the games and end those games by like 27 minutes, 25 minutes, like I you know, mentioned in the average game time of my game. So I think this was really helpful. And again, everything I talk about, I'm going to relate back to this champion identity. Are you a hydraulic press constantly? 
So this was pretty interesting. This was pretty fun and maybe get you more into the mindset that I want you to adopt again when you're learning Zin Zhao or playing Zin Zhao. So now jumping into the rune section for Zin Zhao. I do have two runes here that are sort of the main runes that people look to go when they're looking to play Zin Zhao. Hail of Blades vs Conqueror. I will just say straight up, flat out, Halo Blades is going to be the go-to and everything this guide is going to be based on. I didn't go Conqueror once. I already pretty much had a conclusion before going into this that Halo Blades was the way to go, especially coming back to that champion identity that you want to be having as a Hydraulic Press. You want to be doing very short, very impactful ganks that are going to pressure, pressure, pressure. Ganks need to go quickly, do your full combo. Conqueror is just going to slow you down way too much. Go Hail of Blades, it's going to be much better. It works synergizes so well as well off his Q, his three auto attacks for the knockup. So let's jump into the specific runes now. And I will quickly go over this, but I want to just show, just to preface this by saying there is two options here. A full early game option and then a snowball carries in option. And this is the build that I would go if I'm feeling that I need, I, I, I want to be more of a damage threat. Say if I have more supportive or tank champions in the top lane, but I'd always be building Triforce so I won't be always building Triforce. I'll always be looking to build Triforce with this build. But if I am behind, I'll talk more about the item builds, then you're not going to be wanting to build Triforce. I did test this out, and you notice that I said 13 out of 30 games that I use this build. I actually use this build a little bit more. Um, but I um, tested it out with Tenacity here. And my conclusion is 100% Alacrity is so much better. I felt so much less effective with my combos taking the tenacity again like tenacity is more of like a late game team fighting thing and stuff i want to be again hydraulic press mindset in in doing full combo alacrity just helped me get all this off much quicker so going into the domination runes as well and these are both for the same both options halo blade sudden impact obviously sudden impact really works well off his e zombie ward here so i will go into the way that i use zombie ward more in the vision section there's a lot of argument here about saying, especially in lower elo, saying, well, Nathan, people don't ward enough. Like, I would should just go Arbor Collection. Yes and no, I will talk more a little bit about that in that section. Relentless Hunter, you need to be everywhere on the map. Super important. Again, Hydraulic Press Mindset. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Eventually, snap. That's going to give you the move speed to be everywhere. So little notes here. Again, this is the build. You can look to build Trinity Force if ahead in the early game. Never, I never took, after that I tested it three times, never took Legend Tenacity again, even against a heavy CZ comp. I'll build Merc Treads if that's the case. Um, but again, mindset being is that we need the Alacrity here. Always switch out the last rune stat based on armor or magic resist based on the jungler you're against. And let's say if you're against an Eve and Echo and stuff, it's going to help your dual and skirmishing potential a lot better. I love adapting this based on the jungle that I'm versing specifically, just to give me that more power. So this is the rune page that I started really going, but then I really started testing and actually really liked going this um, a lot. But more specifically, um, I said here, I found myself going this build against heavy AP damage comps, or comps that are looking to like sort of scale. Because Water Walking and Nimbus Cloak, I think, works so well in terms of super high early pressure. Nimbus Cloak was very much, very, very important for me in terms of allowing me to dodge important crucial skill shots when I look to gank. So I had a couple of games that I went versus Zerath and a Valkoz, and dodging their like CC abilities, obviously the Zerath throw, stun, the, I don't even know what that ability is called, the little ball that he throws, and also the Valkos, like these, dodging these were crucial to getting very clean ganks off, and it sort of just really tricks people as well, it's like you engage in, people expect you to just stand there and just cue them, but if you like E in, get the Nimbus Cloak, the extra move speed from your smite, you're literally like running around circles around them, hitting your Q auto attacks, it, you become very slippery, very terrifying to play against. So I felt that this was very good against especially weak early junglers that are looking to scale like Kha'Zix, Eve, Karthus, like even tankier junglers, because I'm going to be looking to potentially double rift Scuttler and have full control to really advance my Hydraulic Press. This, I think, worked really well against squishier scaling comps. And as I said here, against heavy AP damage comps, I'd like to take this. I'd always look to potentially double with Scuttler, the enemy jungler with it. Nimbus Cloak allows me to dodge skill shots easier to get your Q knock up. Just make sure you're not getting locked down because, again, you're taking like going to have no tenacity in the early game here. So we don't want to be getting CC'd. Again, switch out the last rune stat armor based on worth it versus a magic resist, an AP or AD jungler. And the core thing here is I never built Triforce, no matter how good my early game was with this build. Um, and again, we're going to be going 
full sort of the way I sort of view this was more of like a pill pill supportive slash I mean obviously you still want to be very aggressive and be the hydraulic press in the early game but that's the sort of the approach that I went when I took this build in champ select so this is more looking at the champions that I'm playing against if you want to um learn more about this and sort of choosing the champions you want to be ganking i do go into the good and bad matchups later but if you want to talk more about these builds again i'd love you to join my discord server into the channel there and we can talk about that further so i did go these around 14 out of the 30 games but i found myself going this more often than not most games um but i think it's still a 50 50 you can decide maybe you can just choose one of these and go all in on them i think both work well but i did like to adapt them based on the game that I'm playing, or the champions I'm playing against. Okay, so skill order here. This is pretty simple. Start with E, Q second. This is going to give you the level 2 gank options, but then we're going to be flat out maxing W. And I do say here as well, W max first is going to be your main damage shot, so you must be hitting it in fights. I will show you with the combos how you want to be getting this off pretty much all the time. I don't even view it as a skill shot because I think that you can get that off pretty much 100%. So max E second and notice here that it actually stops at level 16. Not a single one of my games went, I went higher than level 16. I'll just either lose or we'll close the game out before then. But obviously you want to max the rest of Q for the last two points there for level 17 and 18. But I will be going again further into the W stuff in my ability combo section. Okay, item builds. So these are the items that are sort of going to be core for Zin, but first we're going to talk about red smite, blue smite. So, absolutely skim should say, but every single game, the does a lot more damage here, reduces their damage for stronger skirmish and dueling potential. But the thing is, is why you don't need blue smite. Blue smite obviously is more of a, a item that you're going to use to get on range champions that are a little bit more slippery. Remember, you don't need to worry about that with Zin because of your E. So, you can easily get your auto attack procs off to get the red smite burn. And obviously, you don't have a problem getting in melee range of targets with your E ability. So always red smite every single game, no matter what you're playing against. It's so good on Zin. Again, hydraulic press. Gank's going to be very quick, very fast. Max damage as possible. And we need to be pressuring as much as possible in the early game. So these are some examples about what I went. And there is three options I sort of went for builds. This was the item build that I'll go for um, the Triforce, the early game snowballing. And remember, you must have taken the Alacra in a precision tree, the option one, to go this build. Otherwise, I'll never go um, Triforce again, no matter how well my early game went. So if you're looking at examples here, so I had a Malphite sort of top this game. And I sort of just felt that this was a good Triforce game. And this one here, I had a Jana support top that was a bit weird. But again, I felt like I wanted to be more of a damage threat, so I decided to go this. And the build, the way you want to build this is go, obviously, build your warrior first. Either of these boots based on if you feel like you're against a heavy AD comp or you feel like you need the Merc Treads because against CC. Rush Triforce, then into Steric Gauge, then into GA. You might be thinking here why uh, you're not going further into other item builds. You can build, you know, an extra item or two. Like, there is, again, you're, you need to be viewing games if you didn't hydraulic press enough to make sure games didn't go, you can't be going longer than, you know, this amount of time. Like, by, like even if you look at this games here, by 22 minutes, I didn't even fully build this item. And this is a 29 minute game. And I just finished this and then I would have built GA next. So as a jungler, especially, you're not going to be getting as much gold. This is a very expensive build, very, very expensive build. You're not going to be able to build all these items. So this is it. If you're going past this, like you've lost the game basically is what i'm trying to say so these are the items this is what you're going to be doing for the good early game next one was item build when behind or don't need to carry and this is again would be going with rune option one or two so this was a game where i felt like i had plenty of damage threats specifically and this is the build that i went this um build the game that i went this build i had a set top talia vein karma like i felt like we really needed some sort of tanky i just feel like i didn't need to carry i could be a hydraulic press here support my lanes get them super far ahead and build sort of tanky so what i'll do is literally rush sterax here is an example um i went ninja tubs this game because i wasn't against much cc obviously there's leona but i am versing a karzik so i don't want to be one shot in me cork is sort of mixed damage um misfortunes ad strong early but I like Vlad again. I I will lose the game. Like Vlad's obviously strongest when he's like le levels 11, 12. 
But I ended this game like 23 minutes. And again, I didn't even need Magic Resist to get to that point. Didn't worry about it at all. And we still won the game. And then I'll be getting Stopwatch next and then either building Stoneplate or Guardian Angel. The reason being here is that I feel like if... If you feel like you're versing a bunch of squishy champions and you can still do some damage and GA is going to deny some burst, then I think going GA is going to be good. And I would have built GA this game because I didn't want to get one shot by Karzix and stuff. But if you're versing more sustained sort of damage comp and you feel like you just want to be more tanky and the fights are going to go a bit longer, then go the stone plate. And then after that item, I'd build a Randuins or a Adaptive Helm based on this, you know, if I'm versing a heavy AD or heavy AP comp. So yeah, so also with this build, and I do note here, I do you do want to be more again in the peeling carries more so than engaging in solo killing people mindset because you just don't kind of have the damage with Triforce to one-shot people. But I, I did say I built this most games. And I did feel this was very effective. I liked playing Zinzia a lot. I think this was really safe. Worked really well for me. Okay, and this is going to be the final build option. This is against very heavy AV, AP comps, if you can see here. Orn is really magic damage, especially with Sunfire Cape, Eve, Fizz, Zillion, Ezreal. So this was very, very effective for me. They literally could do nothing to me. I could even just tank damage forever in this. I feel like a hard tank that still could like one-shot these champs. So Warrior into Merc Treads, into a Hex Drink. I wouldn't build this into more until I finished either Adaptive Helm or Spirit Visage. I like to go... I think Adaptive Helm is a much better flat-out... Um, item for building against tanky if you want to go tanky against AP comps. Spirit of Visage you only really take if you've got like a Sorak or a healing champ on your team. Obviously you do heal a lot from Zin Zhao's like auto attacks and stuff but I don't think it's enough to warrant going Spirit of Visage just by yourself. You're going to get much tankier from Adaptive Helm. Then I'll finish my more and then I'll actually be looking to build a GA. Again just becoming absolutely unkillable. You'll be so hard to deal with for AP comps going this build. So I think this is really effective. And it worked a lot when I was versing AP comps. As you can see, this game I did very, very well. Situal, situational item here, Executioner's Calling. You sort of want to build this after your first item. So this is what you want to build against. If, if you feel like the healing champions in the game are becoming sort of really annoying to deal with, these are sort of like all the healing champs I'll be looking at. Soraka's obviously the main one here. If Soraka's out of control... I mean, I would actually... Whether she's really behind or really fed build this anyway but these pretty situational mundo is obviously very good to build it against but ideally you have put out so much pressure in the early game to shut down a mundo that mundo's never get into that you know late game tank threat that he is um, but situational item again build good to build after your first major item either trinity force sterex and but the important thing is don't ever build the mortal reminder until very very last item so that's the upgrade for executioner's calling that's going to be like all those other items that I listed in the above builds is going to be much more important than finishing a mortal reminder. And again, ideally you never get into the last item because games you're going to be, you know, you have that 30% chance of winning that I talked about, you know, earlier. Okay. So Zin Zhao's, and again, I say practical combos because these are all the combos that I use. And I sort of named some of these. I will be going to these in a second. This is going to be the first gameplay I'm going to be showing in a second, but sort of going over them here, max damage combo. E, auto attack, use your Q, your Q is an auto attack reset, get the three autos, hit the knock up, W is going to be able to hit 100% because they're knocked up in the air, they're not moving, and then you're going to use R to sort of finish them off or, you know, make sure no enemies are collapsing to try and save that person. I call this the surprise knock up, and what you can do is you can hit some two things with like two auto attacks, so hit something, get one auto attack, two auto attack, then we flash and knock up. I do call it surprise because people obviously don't expect the flash, the range that you're going to be able to, the gap you're going to be able to close with your flash. The jab, and I thought this was very effective. And this is sort of like a mind game where you have a team fight, you E in, you get an auto attack, you pretend to get your Q off, then you just disengage. And this was really good for like burning flashes, threatening people, scaring off the, the enemy backline really effective again i'll show you some examples of this at play the zero counter gank play so this is engaging ganks with your q and using your e as a follow-up to their flash and obviously this is not going to be possible all the time but when you can get these off your ganks are absolutely deadly you got to save your e for their flash and you can knock them up once they try and flash your third q and this is a pretty cool name that i came up with this one with the kneecap buster i'll show you this in specifically in the gameplay video we're about to go in but 
basically it was you E to something, either a Rift Scuttler or a Champion or something like that, and you're actually trying to get another target. And then you hit the W, max range, to get the slow on them. Obviously, this is going to be a bit more difficult because it is going to be a skill shot, hard skill shot. So that's going to be that final combo here. And yeah, so now we are going to go into some gameplay and show you exactly how these combos worked in my games. So this gameplay combo section is me showing you examples from those 30 games that I talked about that I used to make this guide, showing you how to be using these combos in actual situations, actual fights in obviously in my game. So again, very practical stuff. You will actually notice here that a lot of this stuff is not fancy and sometimes your combo can get interrupted pretty easily. People aren't just gonna sit there like a train dummy and just take your full combo. So I'm gonna start off with some just some basic max damage ones, but I will be sort of littering through all this gameplay footage a bunch of different combos here and there, but we also the end will be sort of more about how you want to be playing like team fights and skirmishes. So this is a simple um, gonna catch off Eve off guard. I do see her on her red buff, so I'm gonna try and block her off here, try and just one shot her. Also notice this is a game where I have taken the water walking Nimbus cloak. Um, because I am against a very weak early jungle and I wanted to go all in the early game because if I was to be versing these champs that are going to be scaling, I'm going to lose anyway. So again, sort of just showing you an example of the runes there for this game. So coming up here, no Eve's going to be here. Start with an auto attack, get my Q's off, get my Q, my W, sorry, my E off just for some, um, just the extra attack speed. So in this situation, I didn't, I didn't decide to save my E because I knew she actually didn't have flash. So just get that off, max damage combo as quickly as possible. If she had flash, I would have actually saved my E. Now I need to go help my set. Again, auto attack, then my Qs. Use Q for auto attack reset, kill the Orn there. Unfortunately, didn't save my set. And next gameplay here, Silas actually hits me. Accidentally didn't even know I was down the brush. Max damage combo, dead Silas. Okay, this is a gank, and this is going to be the no counterplay gank for me saving my E. Look at this. Auto attack, flashes E, finish him off, focus on brand now, and we just back off there. This is another gank where I'm not using my E because he does have flash. Q, Q, dead. Very, very clean stuff. And again, holding my E for situations where I need to use it. If you don't need to use it, don't need to use it. Your ganks are literally zero counterplay in that aspect. Uh, so this is a gank that actually would be very difficult to work. If you actually notice how bad this gank is, no one is actually committing to this wave right now. I'd actually say it's also a bit risky, but I do know where Sejuani is right now. So I am looking at the map. Sejuani is not here, so I can go for these plays. And this is sort of just showing the strength of, again, Xin Xiao's ganks. Um, the amount of distance you can close, even if they're, you know, this is not an ideal dank situation where they are, you know, my, my teammates made it very obvious that I was coming. So come on here. I am going for Callista, but I decided just to kill Blitz because Callista is going to keep carding us. So I run away to dodge the hook and we get the kill on Blitz there. All right, another max damage. Q, remember hitting W 100% off, off that knockup. Always use your W after you've knocked them up. So I decide just to go on Ash because I know Echo has his ult. And then Echo decides to ult here and we clean up, get a bunch of three kills here. So another very, very clean combos, ganks. Senna charges us up here, gets a little stealth. This is the surprise knockup. I mean, it's not exactly a surprise, but this is sort of showing you two auto attacks, and then I'm gonna flash, get the knockup, and kick, get the kill. This is gonna be another surprise, the surprise Q flash knockup combo on this Zareth. E onto him, one Q, two Qs. He's out of range for my next Q, so just get that there. Use my ult to make sure that we're getting out there safely. Okay, this is a sort of the flash, um, sorry, the surprise knock-up in a way, but it's more showing you how to, why sometimes you should actually hold your cue for better situations. So I actually get a pretty sticky situation. I'm getting collapsed on here. I flash away, my Nimbus Cloak pox there. I see how I actually auto-attack a minion there. And then I'm trying to get my two charges to protect my Vlad. So I actually use this knockup to cancel Mordekaiser's auto because he would, my Vlad would have died here. And this actually would actually save 
like he still does die, but it allows me to get kill the sedge. It goes the gank goes much sloppier for them than they originally intended. Again, utilizing that knock up as a form of CC. But again, going to the con is that um, Zin is not very good for reliable CC. So we come back here, Vlad TPs, and we just get a free kill and ward there. It's always good to abuse sometimes where the wave position is in, utilizing the enemy team T. I mean, your team TP in back. Mordekaiser is going to be sort of stuck. Just go for the repeat gank, and he's dead. All right, this is the kneecap buster I'm talking about. E to the Rift Scuttler, get the slow. His knees are gone. He's very slow now, and we get the kill there. So that's sort of a cool example of the kneecap buster that I framed it. Right, so this is a bit of a dragon fight, so we couldn't exactly walk into here because I obviously just used my sweeper trinket. I know that they have probably have all this watered. We have vision control bot side here, so I'm sort of forced to, if we want to contest this dragon to go around bot side. So going around bot side now, trying to contest this dragon. We can't walk in through top side. There's too much control they have from control wards. And I play this flight very patiently slow. So they do get Dragon. Nunu comes in. Just, just be patient. I don't E yet. I just Q. Just walk backwards. Disengage. Back off. Disengage. Sort of get Nunu stuck in bad position. Zillion's forced to burn his ult. Now the enemy team split off. I just want to finish off this tower here. And remember, this is actually getting a tower at 11 minutes. And I didn't exactly go into the hydraulic press strategy. I'll do that later on. But the full game, how I got to this point, but this is sort of, sh again, showing you a little teaser. And we sort of fully clean up the team fright from that, which is great. And that was great because, again, we baited all their abilities. I'd never committed. If I just suicided committed there, that would have gone really south for us. All right, so I'm looking for a potential counter gank, and I do find Sedge here. Full combo, W, auto attack. She does have auto... The um, aftershock, she queues away, she smites. So if you actually saw Mordekaiser literally just left lane here, I've noted that. I can't finish off killing Sedge here. So I'm going to be very patient. I decide to back off here, wait for my right moment. She's trying to bait me, obviously, but I know Mordekaiser's here. I need to wait for my Vlad. Mordekaiser shows up. Just trying to bait them, juke them a little bit more. Wait for my Vlad, wait for my Vlad. Wait for my Nami to come. And max damage combo on this mod. And look how much damage you can be doing here. Serious amounts of damage. He ults me, but I'm going to beat him in his own ult. Dodge abilities. That's a dead Mordekaiser. We take Rift Child off that. All right, this is sort of showing more team fight. Sort of extended fight. More to later stage game. This is around 20 minutes. And this is, again, me playing very patiently. Look at the threat that I'm putting on the enemy team right here. It forces them to come. Like, Eve comes out of her stealth. It is is very scared. Like I'm not my mindset right now is not actually to E on anyone. I'm just want to scare them off while my team finishes off the fizz. So I'll play this out again. So notice here I'm I'm using like my range, my distance. I'm hugging this wall, making sure that they're not gonna get free or attacks on me, because I can just walk backwards. So here, Duke, 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 Eve comes out, they try and go on me, I get some life still heals off that. And we clean up this fight here. Now, I do need to be careful of Orn. Orn actually is very overpowered now with the new Sunfire Cape changes, but just trying to slowly life steal. In and out, very very calm, very collected. We'll eventually kill him. There's no way he's going to escape, but I still want to help my team try and kill him as quickly as possible so we can maybe even look to get a Baron off this. Ez jumps over the wall, and we finish him off, get the kill there, and we take Baron off this. All right, this is another sort of just showing max damage combo. E Ez is my target. I just saw Eve there, but I do have my ult as well. Get my full ult off. He dies for my red smite. Using my E right now. So look at this. I go I go in and out. It's a constant re-engage, engage, disengage, re-engage. So wait for my E again, re-engage again. I need to back off because I'm getting hit by a tower. I just decided to stopwatch there. Auto attack, E, disengage again. I almost get blocked by a little bit of minions there, which is not ideal. He comes in, re-engage again. Constant disengage, re-engage, disengage, re-engage. That's where Zinzao is actually really effective. Okay, so this is more usage of using my ult to really disrupt this um, 
Kaisa, but I'm also using my ult, obviously. It's very good against champs like Xerath and stuff like that, that are all sort of ranged champs. But again, I'll show you the flank. So I'm coming up through mid. I'm sort of, this is sort of a flank. My target, remember, right now is Kaisa. Kaisa, Kaisa, Kaisa. She's forced to ult defensively. I come back to my team, use my ult in between all of them. That helps us win out this team fight pretty convincingly. Okay, this is actually going to be a bit of the showing you how the jab is really effective. So, remember, I'm against the Zillion with ult right now. And I have no intention to to full combo him. And notice this again, how I, I'm i just trying to, like, just scare him off and just bait the enemy team to come onto me. Like, my ult's coming up soon. I sort of want... It's also a good way to bait people onto you because you can obviously ult to throw everyone away, disengage, force them to be in bad positions, so then your team can start, you know, coming to kill them. So, sort of showing you... I mean, this is probably not the best example of a jab. But I'm just kiting back. We force him, the Zillion, to ult here onto this Nunu. Do miss my W there, unfortunately. Again, this is why you need to be getting the knock-up to hit that W. The range is very... The hitbox is very, very narrow. Now, this is another example of the jab. So I'm getting engaged on here. I do need to run for my life. I am just waiting for my team to collapse, as you can see. And I know Draven has flash, so I'm going to come in, jab, just back out and disengage. So again, it's great for just hitting those abilities. I had no intention to continue on to him because I would have probably died if I... if Knowing that Draven had flash, he would um, just be able to flash. And if I kept running towards him, he would just be able to kill me pretty quickly while I walked to him. So we win that team fight there. This is a pretty good example of me just, again, full damage combo, finding a catch... And this is actually pretty cool as well, I want to put in, because Soraka actually did a really good job to keep me alive here. Turn onto the Jace again, max damage. W, dead. This is a clip of me sort of showing you how you want to be in the pure mindset. So Fizz engages, but Fizz is not my target anymore. I need to just kill this Eve one-shotter before she tries to... Kill my Kaisa again, peel mindset, Kaisa, Kaisa, peel, disengage with my ult. And to finish off this off here, I actually wanted to show you a bit of a tip here. You see how I get ignited? So the ult actually blocks ignite damage as well if they're not in range of it, if they're not in your little ult. So sort of a little cool clip there to finish us off. So there you go. That's going to be all the combos shown. We are now going to continue through my presentation slides. Okay, so now jumping into the early jungle path section. You do have two options here. I did have a third option here that I actually removed based on my testing because I thought these two were just way more effective. I had much more success on them. So option one is the level two gank. And the level two gank, people thought sort of died in the previous patches when season 10 preseason came out because they nerfed Krugs a lot so you couldn't do this path. But this path, I think, has definitely come back, and I had great success on this. I did this path most games. I'll recommend doing this path about 80% of your games. And as you can see here, straight from the testing that I did from this for this guide, I did this 21 out of the 30 games, and I won 13 of those games. I did try some other paths in those 30 games, which I'll obviously talk about, but I would be going this, especially at the later stages, where we're getting that huge win streak, so those hard carry games. Again, going to the hydraulic press mindset, this was so, so, so good for me. So, the way, the reason why you wanna do this as well is because Krugs, obviously, you don't, you don't wanna to fall too far behind the experience goal. You don't wanna just do a red into a gank. That's pretty obvious one, and also by the time you're showing the map there, you're gonna tell the enemy jungle that you haven't done Krugs yet, which gives them a lot of information, and is gonna set you pretty far behind in experience and gold. So this sort of helps you keep up still with experience and gold. The initial experience and gold from clearing Krugs is low, but the scaling experience, which got buffed, is much better. So getting them off the off the map first and then they respawn they're going to give much more experience and gold they're going to have levels so this is sort of efficient but sort of still good early gank path that also gives you a lot more options so the way you can get this off 100 percent i'll show you exactly i'll show you some gameplay clips of me doing this gank but you must run out of base at 15 seconds to ward the river brush to see if the enemy team uh wards so you know whether it's a free gank or not and then you want to also switch out to red sweeper trinket as soon as you've done this ward, just utilize zombie ward. And also, it's going to be very important. Again, I'll talk in the vision slide around how to be using that. Um, 
Red Super Trinket, get it as early as possible, super important. So I found this was very effective against weak early talisman junglers like Eve, Kha'Zix, and Zac, as I had an option to invade the enemy blue after that gank, or even if I don't have to do the gank. Again, I'll show you some examples of that. So you need to make sure if you're going to do the gank, you at least burn a flash or at least get someone low. Otherwise, it was not worth it to show on the map at all. I gave the enemy jungler too much information. They could go steal my blue, do us things on the other side of the map. But also me showing on the map on this level 2 gank also lets the, the other side of the map know that they're safe because I'm so far away, right? And yeah, here it's important to kill the first Krug so you can get levels and start scaling experience. This was changes in patch 10.3. And again, this is the results that I got with this path. So option two was more of a slow start. And this was blue side three camps are doing blue, your Gromp, Wolves, Red. I would only do this path and I rarely did this jungle path. And I said that here at the end. Um, only do this if you feel like the level two gang strategy is not going to work at all. You're not exactly versing one of those weak early junglers. You can't have really option to invade blue. But this is a very highly efficient jungle path. And it's also a very great path to double Rift Scuttler, a weaker jungler in who starts red buff. Because if they're starting red buff, you're starting blue buff. You're going to be able to match them. And then you're because Xin is mostly stronger than a lot of junglers, get that... Rift Scuttler, Double Rift Scuttler, you're going to get a lot of early experience in gold. And the great thing about this as well is that by the time you finish this path and you look to Double Rift Scuttler, you can base and you'll be able to spend your gold, get some controls, and be looking to get a dragon literally at five minutes. Again, I'm going to show you some examples, which we will go into now. I'll be showing you three examples here. Two of them is going to be the level two red gank strategy one and also the blue sort of slow start one showing you those at full effectiveness. And I, I am going to be spending a bit of time on this. Again, the early jungle path is so crucial for Xinxia, making sure you're meeting the right conditions for each jungle path and then executing upon it. But being smart about it and again, going back to the hydraulic press mindset, you need to be relentless about sort of these path in the early path in your pressure early game, but you still can't just be doing dumb things, showing on the map for no reason, over forcing ganks. That's going to be, it's going to make you lose games. I can ensure you that. So first one here is the level two gank strategy. So notice again, out of base straight away, I 15 seconds, I come to place this ward and then I'm going to base and switch out to my red sweeper trinket. And I'm also letting my team know as well that I'm going to level two gank bot. And the reason that I'm level 2 ganking bot here is because I am versing, I might get the champions up again, a Nami and Draven. I do have Lucian, like I guess I don't exactly have hard CC here, but these guys are very squishy. I want to try and get that level 2 gank off. At least burn flushes. It's going to be very, very good for making that potentially my win condition and again, pressing my hydraulic press. And they even said there, we'll try and get two without pushing. Which is obviously going to be very difficult. So start red here. Also show you how I do my Krugs as well. So always kill the big one first. And I will smart the big one. Making sure again using Q as auto attack reset. Trying to cut the small one a little bit. And I'm looking at the lane. And if you notice there. I actually They actually didn't ward this at all. So this is why this ward is so important. I get to know if they ward it or not. So I'm constantly looking there, making sure Nami's not going to ward so that I know it's very free. Because I also can be very patient in waiting in this brush. So as you can see here, I'm going to loop around so they definitely don't see me hugging the wall as much as possible. They hit level 2. They're going in. And now I come in. Remember, I'm going to do my no counterplay gank Q strategy. Hold my E for when they flash. We get the kill on the Nami. Unfortunately, Karma gets that, but... You know, we've, that's great. We've burned summoners. Now bot lanes a potential win condition. This is the potential lane I'm going to be pressing. So I go and check blue now, but it is gone. But again, this is the, all the options that you have. And now I'm just going to go potentially look for a gank mid. And then I'll be looking to go blue defend my blue. Because the thing is, by the time the enemy jungler realizes that I've done this gank, they start thinking, well, oh, he's bot. I should go take his blue. But in this case, actually, Amumu just showed top, and I actually am versing a weaker early jungler, so they're almost never going to be able to match the pace that I'll be able to put on this early game. So it's going to be very punishing. Now I actually come uh, gank mid here, so I'll CCs, another kill. So I'm impacted two lanes already. 
And now I'm going for a third. So this is this is an example of best case scenario. This is going to be pretty rare to do most of the games, but this is again showing the strength of Xin Zhao's early game. Again, from this jungle path. Like the idea of this jungle path is max pressure, putting out as much as possible and impacting lanes and get the game snowballing so you can end the games as quickly as possible in that 25 minute mark. So I get Rift Skull here. And again, all these games were in on my Diamond 4 account. This is all the 30 games that I talked about earlier. So if Fiora gets to slow there, this guy's going to be pretty free. I'm just going to walk up to him, get an auto attack. E, finish him off. Impacted three lanes. Super far ahead. Perfect early game example of using this red level 2 gank strategy. But remember, the key important part there is getting that ward off, making sure they're not warding so they don't see you on the gank. So now here, I am doing the same thing. Run out of base straight away. I do have a Kled. I love getting Kleds ahead. Very snowball champion. So out of base, again, warding this, making sure the enemy team doesn't ward it, making sure there's no counterplay to this. But all I'll actually show you here is this. I actually can't level 2 gank top because based on the wave and Kled's like early push. So again, switch out to Red Sweeper Trinket. I'll sort of skip through this because I showed you before how I do the Red Krugs. And so I know Garen hasn't warded this, but based on again the ward, but as you can see, the Kled is pushing, so it's very hard for me to gank here. So I do something a little bit different. But again, you have options. That's the beauty about this. You have options. So Kled scares him off, which is annoying, but Garen doesn't see me. This is fine. The wave's pushing, so I just leave it instantaneously. And I look to go straight into the blue. And I find actually Echo here. So Echo's done a weird red... Um, blue path, but fails flash there, flash after him, get a kill, huge early lead, I've got the double buffs, and then I continue to start pressing my early lead. With the actual gank mid here, I inverse a Cassidy in here, I think I just burn his flash here, I don't actually kill him. But again, think about all this pressure that I've put out already in the early game here. Again, from that level 2 gank path, that you have options, even if you don't pull off that first gank, is what I want to sort of show you here. Now I'm just going straight bot now. This is They're pretty pushed up, so this is a pretty free gank again. Use Red Sweeper, make sure they don't see me come in. Start on again. Notice that I'm not using E. Waiting for E. Now I use E on center. Burn her flash. Again, don't E if you don't need to. And we get two free kills. So that was really important again, holding your E when you don't need to use it. So this is the second option. This is the more slower start. Blue, three camp, side, red into pressure in the map uh, strategy. Reason I did this is I felt like this was going to be a slower early game because uh, a Yas Senna is probably likely to push in a Kaisar Zerath. Yas is very aggressive with obviously he scares off a lot of people in mini waves because he can, you know, E to everything. Darius I felt like is not going to be very gankable because he's going to be also pushing in a Scion early. So I want to sort of actually even use my... Hopefully Xerath actually pokes them a little bit, so they actually forced back off. But I feel like the first level 1, not going to exactly work too well. But I mean, I potentially could have still done the red level 2 gank strategy here, but I want to just play a little bit more slower early game here. But it actually works really, really well and get like a really early dragon. But I do actually want bot to make my win condition still this game, because again, Darius, like, sure I can, you know, help him kill Sion, but I just want to leave him in on the island, so... Do my red, sorry, my blue, gromp, my wolves. Straight to my red. Always be skipping raptors, especially your first clear with machete. You're a very slow machete. I'm oh, sorry, raptor camp taker with machete. And again, see, look at this, how my bot was pushing. So I couldn't have level 2 ganked that anyway. So I actually decided to do my Krugs here as well. And this is, again, pretty max efficiency. So also notice as well that I have gone Nimbus Clug Water Walk in. Again, this is a very good path to be potentially double Rift Scuttling off them, the enemy jungle off. So I do my Krugs, come to Rift Scuttling now, I have a push in bot. I tell my Darius that Nunu is probably topside. But it actually is bot, which is great for me. It means I'm instantaneously going to double Rift Scuttler. So he's got Aftershock right there. I'm not going to worry about him. I've already got him low. I need to press my advantage right here. I have already know where he is right now. Double with Scott Love. That's my priority. And I'm actually very, very far ahead off this. So come through mid now. Double with Scott Love. I have water walking. It's going to be very easy for me to get these. 
And again, see how all top and bot were all pushing? Very difficult for me to get any ganks. This is, again, for slower games. Just go full, max efficiency. I mean, I'm always level 5 after this Gromp at 4 minutes, 20 seconds. Unfortunately, my bot lane does die here. But again, you see Nunu's level 3 right now. Super far behind. Going to hit level 5 now off these wolves. Remember, it's not even 5 minutes yet. Spend my gold. Get Skirmisher Saber. Two control wards, always two control wards on bases, ins out. Five minutes. Nunu just sticks around for some reason. Yes, sort of suicide's in there. And I run straight to dragon, get some control wards down here. And I get a five minute and thirty minute drag five minute thirty second dragon. Excellent stuff for me now. I'm gonna be bot side to clear my same potential. My raptors, Krugs, and I can gank bot. And Nunu's sort of really stuffed right now because Nunu can't, he, he's going to be top side. He spent a lot of time bot side. And, he, you know, Darius can 1v2 a Sion Nunu. Darius is a very, very good um, tank killer. So, again, I think this was the way that this early game played out was very, very good for me based on the champions I had and was against. And again, this is sort of adapting your jungle path around that. And now I actually come down here for a gank and get some kills. I think we kill this guy or at least burn his flash. Dead. Great stuff for me. We even waste Zillion's TP as well. All right, so that's the three jungle paths for you. We are now going to jump into our, the rest of the presentation. So one of the options you'll notice that I didn't include in here was the red, blue, Gromp jungle path. I started off doing this when I was playing Zin. That's obviously a very popular level three quick path. But I found that if I didn't have the option to gank or get some kills off the blue, red path... Uh, that level three path off the Gromp, I was gonna. I felt like I felt really far behind the experience because I didn't clear my Krugs once yet. I'd need to base and then go clear them, which would be first at around four minutes or so. But also, it limited a lot of my options compared to again the level two gank path, and that's the path that I really want you to try and go most games. Again, I probably would be going that 90% of the games. Obviously, this option two here can do in that games specifically that example that I was against when all your lanes are probably going to be pushing and it's going to be slower start. So, so yeah, I, I, I'm not going to put that path in here at all. I think that if you're going to go for early high pressure, the level three, um, this is option one's definitely the go-to. Okay, so moving now on to the complement that champions that you are good against, bad against. Question being here is, in Zin, is Zin Zhao blind pickable? And I did blind pick him in a lot of games and I definitely sort of regret it but I just again to test this out I wanted to know what champions he was pretty bad into so starting off champions is really good against in general Zen is very good against squishy champions with not really good escape tools or um, can't jump over walls so Zareth I did talk a little bit about dodging his abilities with Nimbus Cloak really good to pick up um, up those runes around him. Orion is sort of the same. You can sort of predict when she's going to ult, run away, re-engage with your E. Super squishy. Brand, you saw I did gank him a bit in those early gameplay videos. Jace is very good to get behind early, and I felt like he obviously can knock you back, but that's when you can potentially just E after him after that. I mean, Jace is a little bit more trickier to gank, but again, he's pretty squishy, good to shut down. Kale, deny him from scaling, similar to Rise, I guess. Pike, you might think, why is he on here? Pike is a champion. If you get on him and combo before he gets his E off, you just one-shot him straight up. So I think is actually very, very good into Pike. I had good success against him. Again, all these champions share something in common. They're all pretty squishy. They're not building tank. Um, these champions, I had a lot of fun ganking and were great for making them like my hydraulic press win condition. Just going all in. Kill, 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 kill. Eventually, they will snap. Um... Junglers, Xin Zhao is good against. So these are all pretty weak early talisman junglers that don't exactly build tank. I am saying Shivana's going to go AP here. First of the junglers for me felt very easy. Gave me a lot of options in the early game, and I love doing my level 2 gank strategy around these. I had so many options again to invade blue. They're going to be very scared to go invade my blue if I'm walking through mid. I had so much pressure here, and again, it made my hydraulic press mindset much easier to pull off, to just break, 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 snap, because these champions sort of need to scale to be effective. I'm going to be ending the game before they even have any chance to get items. I, you do notice that I did put a line with Aftershock junglers under here. Um, reason being is that 
These, like, Zinzao obviously doesn't like versing tankier champions, and I will go over it in a second. The champion's not a good against, but he is good against these champions. The fact that, again, they fall into the category of early weak talisman junglers and allow you to be the hydraulic press much easier. But these champions, if they get a free level 4, if you don't do much early game, they outscale you pretty quickly. And if, especially if these guys kill you once, like, the game just became very, very difficult for me. So you are good against them, but you sort of, you know, really need to make sure you're making sure you'll punish them early game for being the weak talisman jungler. All right, champions Zin is bad against. These champions, you notice, all have a common trend. They're very slippery, they're very hard to gank, and they're very tanky built in as well. So, notice Jax is circled in red here. Jax was my permaban every game. So Jax is the ultimate hard counter to Zin. You can't get your combo off really ever for him, and he's a scaling champion, so that threat of making him a win condition is literally gone forever. Like, you can never gank a Jax lane. He has tools to escape. So in general, Zin's bad into tanky champions with tools to escape ganks and can kite you easily. Playing against these champions in general, when I when I blind picked and people were picking these champs, I just felt like the game was playing on hard mode. I'm like, this is like, I'm not even a champion here. You might think, why is Zed in here? Zed's very slippery. And if you Eon him, he has so many tools to avoid you. He's got his ults, his W. Um, and specifically these mid champs, yes, you might think they're sort of squishy. I mean, if Lissandra goes Aftershock, obviously not. But these champs can kite you super easily, can counter your engage so easily and they you know just gonna cut you for days obviously the one can jump over walls she's got a distortion so you can't even just one shot her her passive and vlad obviously has his w so all these champs try to avoid planes in into obviously you're probably not going to be able to avoid all these champs every game if you're even not if you're even your blind picking if you're picking you know fourth or something like that and they randomly pick these last but in general these games i struggled in all right, so notice as well in my good champions to play against, I didn't have any AD carries in there. And I felt like pretty much every AD carry is very good. It's more the support champion. There's more the support champion that they're playing with. And these champions made the lane ganking very difficult for me. And it sort of denied bot and the level 2 gank strategy when it came to bot much difficult. And even having four dragons as a win condition. It is possible, but again... Sorry, it makes it very, very hard to gank bot. So... When I, I'll potentially be looking, if I want to do the level 2 gank strategy, maybe try and pull this off if they... Obviously, some of these champions won't have level 3, won't have their full kit, but then that's when I'll be potentially opting in to do that blue, slow, sort of slow start um, jungle path. Next one here is jungle champions that Zin is very bad against. And Olaf, like these champions... So they fall into a bunch of categories. They either outright beat you 1v1, kite you easily, or have lots of escape tools. Olaf straight up beats you 1v1. Nidalee clears very fast, and she can actually deny you being a hydraulic press pretty easily because she can come and deny the win condition from you. But also she can jump over walls and kite you pretty easily. There is a situations where you can just E onto her and one-shot her, but in general, I struggled against Nids. Elise, she has her repel. She has cocoons to kite you. Auto attack ranges, very difficult. Warwick straight up beats you 1v1. Ramos was an interesting one because he obviously falls into the category of um, weak talisman early jungler, but he, Ramos is like the ultimate counter because he's so obviously like works really well against heavy AD champs. And because you don't really have any sort of true damage, he just obliterates you. Even He can even beat you outright 1v1 with red buff, honestly. I really struggled against Ramos. Try and avoid Ramos as much as possible, but he's not very much of a popular champion. And Shoko can sort of just walk around circles on you. Like, Shoko's probably never going to beat you in a 1v1 duel-ish. I mean, with his ult, he probably will. Um, but more, I'm more thinking of the early game. Very, very annoying to deal with. Again, can sort of be everywhere and sort of match the pressure that you're putting on one side of the map. Okay, so now we're going to jump into... This is going to be the pretty big meat of it. This is going to be showing you the hydraulic mindset, the hydraulic press mindset at work. And again, I mentioned this earlier, all these examples didn't require the use of Rift Shower, and I broke all these towers, got full five plates before 14 minutes. So we're going to go over three examples here. A top tower one with... I had Zin plus a Jace with me. This is going for bot tower break, and this last one was another top one, and I had a set. So let's dive into this now and get into these. This again, the hydraulic press mindset, very, very effective. These worked a lot of my games. It's not just these three games that it worked of the 30. Okay, we're going to dive real deep now into this hydraulic press mindset I've been talking a lot about over the last hour and a bit. 
this game we do break we snap the tower at 10 minutes 50 seconds but also i mean this chogath is just absolutely snapped as well we've broken him mentally as well as literally his champion in this game so Example one, this is me getting my Jace so far ahead to the point where we get such a big advantage, it's almost impossible to lose this game. And again, this is the this is what you need to be all in on and thinking about how am I going to do this every single game. So the way I identified that this game was obviously Cho'Gath is very, very weak in terms of the early stages. Uh, very easy to gank. He doesn't have really any exact tools. Like I would actually almost put Cho'Gath into a champion that... Uh, Zin's pretty good at, but I didn't want to because late game stages he does get pretty tanky and he does classify into that, but the fact that I do have a Jace here early is going to be great for me to get ahead. Jace is an excellent poke champion, especially against champs like um, Soraka. She's not going to be able to heal everyone that's getting hit by Shock Blast. So I guess I do also have a Blitzcrank and Misfortune that I could have all in on, but again with the fact that I'm topside, red, Krugs, gank, that's what I'm going to be doing this game and it works perfectly flawlessly. And again, this is one of the 30 games that I tested this out on. Okay, I also notice the runes here. I am going Nimbus Cloak and Water Walking because I do want to go all in on the early game here. And also, um, I'm versing a weaker Sedge, so I want to potentially even look for Double Rift Skull if that's also an option and bully her out of her jungle. All right, so notice my Blitzcrank is telling me, come invade, and I'm so dead set on this, again, my mindset, hydraulic press mindset right now, that I'm going to break and snap this top tower. I tell the Blitzcrank, I am not invading with you. Do what you want, but I'm not going to invade with you. I need to get this ward down here to do this strategy. I have to get this ward at 15 seconds out of base every single time. So place the ward here. Going back to base now, switching out to my Red Sweeper Trinket. They try and do some sort of invade. I don't care what they're doing, but if they die, they die. I'm going to, again, break this map through top. Okay, so start with red here. Uh, we've already gone over jungle to jungle path, so we're just going to get straight into the gank. So, Chogath, obviously in a very good position the lane is right now. I've fully cleared my Krogs. Coming up for gank number one. Chogath misses his Q as well. And remember, I'm not going to throw the E. Remember, we're going to start with a Q. Auto attack reset. He flashes. Remember, this is the un can't counter gank. Can't, there's no counter to this. Dead first kill number one. All right, so Sejuani actually shows up here as well, which is great. I get free information on her. This gives me a potential opportunity to double Rift Scuttler. And Sejuani is actually in here. Um... I'm not sure why she was trying to 1v1 me here, so this was pretty ridiculous by her. And she does get away, but we burn her flash, but that's okay. We've chunked her out, and Jace actually goes ham for her and goes for the kill as well. So he's got double buffs. Great for him. I mean, he's played that pretty well there as well. I get, just check what camp she's up just to get some information right now. And look to do Rift Scotland number one. And also looking for a potential mid gank here on this rise. Whilst I walk bot for the double Rift Scuttler. And for some reason, Diana dives in there. She dies. That's whatever. I mean, I burned his flash. Ideally, she just got the flash and that's it. But I need to get this double Rift Scuttler. That's definitely what I need to do here. I do see the Drani here. And I just want to hit this Scrying Plant just to get some vision. I actually see an op opportunity to gank bot here as well. So instead of doing the double Rift Scuttler, I'm like, I'm actually just going to go gank bot here. I have a Blitzcrank to utilize, so again, I've, I've technically impacted three lanes again, and I will do this if I get the opportunity to present myself, but I still, my mindset is still the hydraulic press mindset, break top. I'm just going to do some things here and there just to, I mean, if I can impact all three lanes, I'll impact all three lanes. So I get also double Rift Scuttler here. Let my Sejuani, I mean, I don't want to actually go bot anymore, so I really need to keep hammering top. So all my mindset right now is to just clear my full bot side camps, and then I'm going to be really hammering top again, potentially looking for dives. So clear that, clear my wolves, and then I'm going to look to base off this. I do have lots of gold right now. Definitely want to spend that, get my control wards. We kill Ryze right now. Blitzcrank had a pretty good roam there. That was good by him. And I sort of tell Blitz, go help bot right now because I, yeah, I just want bot to just not completely lose. So going straight top now. This is again great for me. Tell my Jace on my way straight top here. Because I do see that the Jace is actually poked out a little bit. So Chaga's going to be playing pretty aggressively. 
Use my red sweeper trinket, make sure he doesn't know I'm here. Walk up to him. Remember, I have red smite Nimbus Cloak again. This will actually help me dodge his abilities as well, but I just went all in on him. I know he didn't have flash, so sometimes you can actually just remember it. You can do that E start combo if they don't have flash, which I knew he didn't flash, which is obviously going to be the quicker gank. Kill number two for the Jace. So I do see Juani C top now. I did look at my Krugs a little bit, but this is also use of vision, and I do... I will talk a little bit more about vision in the vision slide. But why I want to place this control ward here is because this is my hydraulic pressing location, I need to also be setting up wards around this just to protect my Jace. The junglers never check this at all. And I also want to deny the blast cone as well, again, just to be constantly helping my Jace. My Jace, I'm just going to help, help, help. Again, press, press, press this until it snaps. All right, so obviously Cho'Gath's dead, coming back, Jace is out of base, nothing for me to do. This is where I need to be efficient. And I did say as well is that you still need to be very efficient with um, your jungle path in here. Still making sure that I'm nice and farmed up. I'm going to be level 6 off this. Level 6 now, and rinse and repeat, looking at top again. And that's the thing is I'll always be using F keys, looking at lanes, looking at positions. Comes up for the CS right here, and here we go, number three. I mean, this this obviously this guy is not playing very um, safe, like based on what's going on. But I mean, you know, this is just more just breaking his mentality right now. So, break, break, break until snap. Remember, this is a diamond four game as well. So if you think maybe this won't work in lower elos, like you know, take what you want with it. But people players still do this even in diamond. Just keep walking up. Alright, so unfortunately we do lose Dragon for this. I was prepared for this to happen, so I'm not too fussed about this. Again, focusing on Rift Herald, focusing on top. I don't care about bot at all. I did my little bit bot, but that's going to be it. Alright, so Blitz gets a really good hook here. And we kill the Rise. And I actually die there. I was not expecting to die there from the Sage, which is a bit unfortunate. I really should have just backed off there, done my Gromp, done my Wolves, and went straight back top again to keep pressuring. Again, Hydraulic Press. So they're actually getting mid-tower off that as well, which is actually pretty good. So my team, this example, my team's all doing pretty well. I mean, obviously, theoretically, I helped all lanes, right? So, you know, you can say, well, Nathan, you had a pretty good team here, but remember that early pathing that I did here? Obviously, my the pressing location is top, but I did help, you know, mid and bot as well. And again, this is just so short and stone, all the pressure you can put out. All right, so I see the Rise hit this Scrying plant here, so I just back off because this is a potential 1v2. My Diana doesn't have priority right now. And looking to come top here, help my Jace. If she wants to do that gank, that's whatever. Come here, and we're going to kill this Cho'Gath again. Again, top, 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 top. Even though I, even though out of base, I did have my bot side camps up, I still decided to go top. That's the key thing here. Look to get Rift Herald now. This is my opportunity. And, okay, so after Rift Herald, so I know, remember that Cho'Gath's going to be coming back to lane here. Jace is TP. I'm actually looking to set up a dive, and I, you notice that I also repositioned this pink ward here. Come top here. I just back off, wait for Dino to come finish him off. We've killed him for another fifth time. He has five deaths now. And now we're going to break this tower, and I still have Rift Herald, and we've broken mid-tower. So now this is great for me because now we're going to break all three outer towers. I mean, look at all the plates we have right now. There's just no way the enemy team is going to be able to make a comeback from this. I mean, look at the lead that we have just purely, again, all off that early pressure. Break top, and now we can go bot and then even deny the fourth win condition, the dragon soul win condition for them as well. So even though I lost that first dragon, doesn't matter. So now we go bot here. This is our next objective. Always think of league. Towers, towers, towers. This is the next tower for the outer. We've broken the first top two here. Don actually did a really good TP down there. I'm just coming to just rift out. I don't even care what's going on here. I'm just going to rift off this. And we've broken all three outer towers by 11 minutes and 50 seconds. Early pressure. This is it. This is what Zin's really, really good for. Again, unstoppable force hydraulic press mindset. There's nothing else Zin's going to be better at than doing this. Go all in on your strengths. Don't worry about the weaknesses. Don't worry about the late game. 
All right, so this is example one. I will now move into the second example. It's gonna be around bot. Okay, so this is example two of the hydraulic press mindset. My, the place I'm gonna be pressing right here is bot, but I'm still going to do the level two gank strategy. Again, I think that it opens up so many options against junglers like um, a Zac, and it actually isn't a Scion on top. If it was a Scion on top here, I probably would have actually done the, um, the jungle path that I was talking about before, the blue, gromp, wolves, red, into maybe looking for a top gank. Sorry, we're not gonna be looking top gank at all because it's a Scion. And then look to the, do the double rift scuttler because a Zac would most likely be starting bot side. So this is the, the game where I could have also, it's so again, if it was a Scion, showing top right here. And this is the great thing about this ward as well is because I got out of base 15 seconds to place this ward, Riven to told me that she was top. But if I didn't have information on that, I um, I mean, I actually would have thought that Riven was um, going to be mid and side on top. But again, I got information, so I'm going to still do this red path. But my bot side's going to be my my press in because I have a Thresh. I can utilize his CC. Vayne's great to scale up. And it's going to be able to easily deal with these three melee champs. I mean, Vayne's a very good counter to Zach and... Um, Scion, but Lux doesn't fall into the category of difficult champion to gank at all. Obviously, you have to dodge a Q. I'm not taking Nimbus Cloak this game, you'll notice, because I am taking the Precision Tree because I actually don't have much damage in terms of topside. So I actually want to be a potential carry threat with Morgana shields and stuff like that. So, so yeah, I'm still going to do um, the level 2 gank here, obviously get my Skarna going, but the more fact of this is I just want to have the option to invade Zack on his blue as well, and then, you know, do the normal, just walk through the entire map, just show my presence everywhere, and just be, and then be looking to pressure bot. But, I mean, if I was starting the other side of the map, then I definitely would have done the Thresh, the level 2 thing, and it would have been able to gank bot, it would have been better for me, but again, given the situation here... I want to actually more punish Zach because remember, I can't be letting champs like Zach, um, Sedge, and stuff like those tanky champs to get free level fours. So I'm going to try and pressure. I need to pressure ASAP, and getting red buff is the perfect pressure in buff to just start doing things on the map ASAP. So I do my Krugs now, and then I look to gank this. So I want to also highlight here my patience here. So you notice how I don't just go in here because Riven's a very slippery champion. I need to re I need to see him commit. So I want Skarna to bait use his Q and stuff like that, his stun, before I go in here. So I'm waiting patiently. Remember, I don't know, I know this is not warded because I did my ward. And then he does his shield here. But unfortunately, I get knocked up by that last Q. And he actually gets level 3 off that as well. So pretty lucky there, actually. Um, we get him pretty low health. Don't burn his flash, but, you know, that's whatever. And this is the important thing as well, is making bot my, the place that I'm pressing as the hydraulic press because I they've burnt they've actually just fought and burnt a bunch of summoners. So that's great. I've done my top gank. Skarna's gonna be nicely do whatever he wants. And now I'm actually just looking to back off here. Remember Riven's, Riven's pretty strong early. I don't want to too much just mess with him. Again, I just there's no point in me risking anything. And also Skarna said he's got a big wave right there. So I just want him to let that get that farm. So Morgana actually dies here. So this is a situation where we actually need to give up Rift Scuttle R to us to a Zack. And this is again things you need to assess. And I said be smart. Don't be dumb and you know still be relentless. But if I don't have priority mid, it's gonna be 1v2. No matter how much stronger, two having two champions is gonna be able to kill a Zinzao. But I definitely do want this um Second Rift Scarlet Last. So I actually just go on him straight away because Sion I know is actually pretty far away right now. Just want to get some chunks on him. I am pinging this right now. But Sion does go back to mid now. So I know, back to mid, I'm just going to take this Rift Scuttler. The Zach's actually looking for a gank right here. I now need to come counter gank. I decide to just kill this Kaiser quickly first. Get the, the that was sort of like a little combo of the kneecap. I mean, I didn't get the 100% guaranteed knock up there. And here we go. We're starting to press this right now here, right now. We've got Vayne, he's already on a killing spree, she's 5-1. and one. Now, we, so even though she's 5-1, and one, she definitely could still get shut down here, but I need to be playing around her. She's now my win condition. This is, again, the tower that I need to be breaking. This is where I need to be using my hydraulic press strategy on. So I use this opportunity, clear some wards, get my little zombie ward proc. This is where zombie ward, you know, comes in handy there. We've got a permanent ward down there now until they obviously kill it. Use this opportunity just to clear my... My blue, my gromp, notice I don't do wolves here because I do still want to be efficient. I get two control wards 
And now I don't actually want to gank top at all. I'm only coming up here to clear my camps, and then I'm going to be focusing on bot side for the next three, four minutes. Again, trying to break this tower. So I look, I look at top just to see maybe there potentially is a free kill, but I actually don't want to show top at all as well because that's going to eliminate all my pressure on bot. So the biggest thing is also not showing around places that isn't your win condition because as soon as you're showing the map as a Xin Zhao, especially at this stage of the game, then your pressure's gone. So you're going to need to be scary. You need to be in that vision, out of vision, sorry, so the enemy team's always questioning where Zin, where Zin, where Zin. So just be efficient here. Oops, I skip a little bit too far ahead. Do my Raptor camp. And they're actually looking to dive my bot, which I thought was just insane right now. And my bot actually does a pretty good job to handle themselves here, but I'm coming straight down. And I actually go all the way around. I know that they have the blast cone here, so I try and scare them off, but I decided actually I'm just going to go around. I actually have no idea where that cast. It looked like she went over with me, but she didn't. I'm just going to let them kill her, whatever. Just take this Rift Scuttler. So remember, the bot plate, the bot tower right now is in, still has four plates. So I still need to be, remember, I need to be breaking this. Like, I could theoretically leave this right now, but the important part is this is constantly pressuring it so it snaps as early as possible. So here's this opportunity just to take Dragon. I have full vision control right now. We've got plenty of wards down for River, and we've got the Rift Scuttler. And this is a good thing as well. I could pretty much have soloed this, but Vayne comes to help me, which is nice. Dodge the Lux abilities there. Wait them out. Take Dragon. Place my control ball there just to get some vision. So I think this is pretty ham from us. I do have ults right now. Uh, we do get a double kill here, but we are going pretty ham, and Vayne actually unfortunately dies there. So maybe this is something we didn't need to do, and actually continue to go on the Kaisar, and she flashes out. But remember, she's just burnt flash right now, so that's great. I actually think this is way worth it, because breaking this tower, re-ganking this is fine. So go probably a little bit too ham. We probably didn't need to do that there, but again, using this opportunity, Kaisar's based. My bot's not around anymore. Use this time to be efficient. Clear my full top side. Maybe even look for a Rift Child. I don't think I do do Rift Child. Because Riven is actually pretty strong right now. I don't want to just risk that. And then clear my full topside camps. And now let's go bot. Let's keep pressing, pressing, pressing. Hydraulic press mindset. So they actually... What happens here? They actually roam mid. And I'm like, okay, you guys can roam mid. But now I'm going to get full control of this. Use one of my control wards. Um... I do. I am pinging Thresh to actually clear that because I know there's probably a control ward in there. Um, but they actually see me down here anyway. But it doesn't. That's the thing about this. This is the thing about being relentless. Sure, it might be obvious what I'm doing, but the enemy team can't do anything about this. So my Thresh gets a really good hook, and this is again utilizing the CC that I have on my teammates to be continually again pressing this. Now we're going to scare off this Kaisa. I think I flush on her here. Remember, I know she has no flash, so that's another free kill. Press, press, press bot. But remember, still want to be efficient around the hydraulic place you're pressing. All right, use this opportunity just to steal some Krugs. And now I'm just waiting, very patiently, wait to come back. Again, there's nothing more important for me to do in than making this snap. Remember, you are a hydraulic press. Here I go, come in again. Here comes Lux. She's level four right now. I just decided to ult there. And that's the other thing as well. I'm very um, not stingy using my ult at all. So unfortunately, Riven does um, ping, like come down here and stuff. Vayne sort of suicides for Kaisa. She does kill her, but we do burn a bunch of TPs. We get a lot of people down here. I just decided to back off. And Zach actually got Rift Child there as well, and he's using it to try and break mid. But the good thing about it, we have five plates mid. That's whatever. That's a waste of Rift Child. Use Rift Shields to break towers. And I mean, that was pretty smart of him. I mean, this is sort of, you know, high diamond. I mean, diamond elo. So players will punish me for being bot, you know. So, but again, this is fine. So I don't even really worry about. Just keep farming. And now just go bot again. Here we go. Snap tower, snap tower, snap tower. So coming down here. Remember, I know Kaisa still has no flash. And that's a dead Kaisa. 
Triumph heals me up. This is where Triumph comes pretty in handy. I do have a lot of gold right now, so I do definitely want to potentially look to base. And start building that Triforce, because remember, I've had a very good early game right now. Even though I don't have many kills, I've, I mean, I feel like I'm, I, I feel like I just need to build Triforce this game as well. The fact that I do have a Skarno, who's not going to be doing insane amounts of damage, and a Morgana. All right, here we go. Notice right now. So this is a time where I shouldn't be efficient. Even though my Krugs and my Raptors are up, I need to go bot because Dragon's up. There's a lot for me to do down here, remember. I need to... This is the time where I need to be snapping this tower and just keep breaking bot. So Vayne does a really good job down here. I mean, they're just doing so well right now with their huge lead that we've amassed. Just 13 and 3 right now. But again, as a jungle, I need to be keep down here to make sure that we actually secure this tower and make sure that Zack isn't preventing the, you know, the hydraulic pressing. So I scare them off here. Get my little zombie ward proc off there. I unfortunately didn't kill the ward in here. So I reposition my control. And this is why I say two controls is so important because now I get this and I get free zombie wards in there. Alright, so I'm actually looking to kill Asan here. Potentially, this is potentially a time where I should have actually made sure that Bok got that tower. I, I sort of was a little bit greedy there, thinking that they could get that themselves, but Zack was there. They do eventually get it, but I actually really should have just literally just sat in this bush and just waited for them to secure that tower in case Zack went for a gank or something like that. So Asan comes down, kill him. And... Get a bunch more kills here, finish off the Zack passive, and there we go. We're broken tower. Again, pre pre 14 minutes, full five plates, my vein bot lane got, and also this is going to be a second dragon as well. And again, this is the great thing about having bot as a win condition, is because you get the fourth dragon dragon soul, which I think we actually no, I think we ended this game beforehand, but that's all I'm gonna go over this example here. We will now move into example number three. Again, this is gonna be a top lane. Hydraulic press snap slash break. Okay, so this is going to be the third example of the hydraulic press mindset. This was a little bit different. I want to show to show you some a little bit of flexibility around the red um, Krugs gank path because <clears throat> I mean this one is I potentially could have added into it, but I in terms of the jungle path, but I didn't feel like it warranted the entire slider because I rarely did this path. Reason being, I did this path which was actually red Krugs blue, and I actually made top my win condition here because remember going into that slide about champs that Zin's not very good at good against like this is definitely a very difficult lane for many gank bots so this is going to be very difficult for me to make that my win condition my pressing place and i am versus an olaf here as well so remember i lose that 1v1 so i even potentially can't do that blue um uh what's it called the blue gromp wolves red because i'm just no way i'm going to double rift scuttler a um a olaf so Let's dive into this here. I'll show you where I actually ward, which is a bit different. I place a ward straight away at a base onto his raptor camp because I know Olaf's love doing raptors. It's going to help me sort of track, sort of get an idea of what his early jungle path is. So if I am looking to gank top, then I am able to um, know that, you know, because 2v2, we could definitely lose this. So I decide just to base here. Switch out to my Red Sweeper Trinket. As usual, every single game, do this. Place your ward down. Switch out to Red Sweeper. And do my Red Buff. And again, Krugs. Again, I just love this. Even though I'm going to be... The thing is about this as well is that because I'm going to be topside for a long period of time, I don't want Olaf to take these for free as well and sort of counter jungle me. So get these off the map. Going to deny more opportunity for counter jungling for the Olaf because I will be topside. And I just... Again, I just love this jungle path. I just feel so... So far ahead in terms of experience, I'm not falling into that trap again of going that red, blue, grump path where I just feel like, I, because my Krugs aren't off the map, gives you the most experience in gold as the scaling experience goes. I just feel much more um, much more ahead in the game. So I am checking all lanes right now. I do take a quick look at bot because I'm thinking maybe, but again, I don't know if they warded because I didn't place the ward there, so there's just no point in me taking that risk. All right, so I do look at mid here. I actually potentially would have ganked this as well, level two, if this opportunity presented itself. But I also didn't have that opportunity because, I, again, I don't exactly know where Olaf is right now. And also, my Kassadin is too low. And Syndra can actually just knock me back and stuff, and it's a bit annoying. So do my blue buff now. And again, looking at top wave. Looking, like, what's going on? Let's, let's look to gank this. Always be looking at lanes. See... This is going to help you make 
good decisions in terms of your path in. So do my blue buff, and I actually think I have plenty of time to do my grump as well. Again, I'm trying to still be efficient here, even though top is where I'm going to be pressing. But top's pushed in, so I can't exactly gank that. And now set's actually got him pretty low. So now I'm coming for a potential counter gank here. And here we go. Olaf shows perfectly here. So I'd be very patient here. Wait for him to actually engage on set. Set gets a really good CC on him. And we get the first kill. And Silas actually accidentally goes in here. Unfortunately, he doesn't die to my red buff. But now I'm going to try and go wrap all around. Actually, no, I don't. But he's actually staying on tower right now. Okay, so actually what I'm doing here is I'm waiting. I think Syndra is going to be roaming up. So I actually wait there for a little bit. But Syndra actually shows up back mid. But again, just making sure I'm protecting my set. Remember my sets. This is the place that I'm pressing. So kill number one. We've burnt Silas's flash. We have um, burnt his TP. This is going to get really exciting now. Love being a very slow, rigid hydraulic press. is eventually going to make this Silas absolutely break and snap. All right, so use this opportunity just to base. I'm going to go bot now, be a little bit efficient, clear my second Krugs. I am taking a quick look at bot to potentially look for a gank, and they are pretty overextended. So I am, even though I said before, in terms of showing, I think this is worth it because my Ash and Zaya, sorry, I can't actually scale all right. So use this opportunity to sort of, you know, get some kills here. Maybe we can even potentially take Dragon off this, and then I need to be top. But again, this is going to be really my only opportunity to gank bot because I need to be top, again, being the hydraulic press. So I'm sort of just being patient here, waiting, try and W scare him off. But all we actually do is kill Thresh here, which is not ideal. And now I need to, I know that I need to go back top to be looking for dives. So I actually skip my Krug. So that, that whole situation was probably actually not worth it. Situation not worth it. Even though I have 100% kill participation right now, I still definitely need to be breaking this top tower as quickly as possible. It's coming up five minutes right now and there's full five plates on this. So I, so also notice here, again, this is just me assessing the game state right now. I have my Gromp up. Again, this is not a time for me to be efficient. There's an opportunity presenting itself right now. I need to kill this Silas to again snap this, break, break this top tower. So I even tell my set, just wait for me. Let's make this cleanly as possible. So coming up for a dive here now. He's trying to base and actually set misses that, which is a little bit odd. So I'm like, okay, this is an opportunity. Olive's Krugs are up. I'm just going to take these. I'll just wait for him patiently to come back into lane and we'll kill him again. This is the perfect example of hydraulic press mindset. I am going to be relentless here. Here we go. Here we come. Silas, what are you doing? You're going to be dead again. Let's keep breaking this tower. Keep breaking this tower. And this is, I mean, you're breaking the champion, but also mentally. This guy is just so just angry right now. He has to be calling the set. Or me, I don't know who he's calling right now, saying you're so good. So he's just checked out. He's 13 CS right now. This is why this mindset's so good, just for breaking people's mindsets in solo queue. I mean, it's. I mean, to be honest, I can't blame them. I mean, it's no fun to be going into a game and having 13 CS and being stuck on your tower and having a Zin Zhao set just diving you over again. But again, it's great for you on your side because you can capitalize on this. And it worked, again, very effectively in all my games. So based on my warrior, it's a huge item spike for me. I want to come down here and get my red. Little positive reinforcement here, just make sure men set uh, good friends, good buddies, saying good jobs. So we can just keep doing this. Okay, so use this opportunity. Remember, I'm happy. I have to be happy losing the first dragon or two because you know top's going to be my win condition, breaking this top tower. But again, it is worth it just to be getting my lane is so far ahead and making Silas literally just unplayable in this game. So. Use this opportunity again. My set's in base. There's nothing much happening. This is the opportunity where I be efficient, clear my red and my Krugs. All right, I actually look to do a pretty hard full clear right now because I feel like Silas is so scared. He doesn't even want to walk up to lane anymore. So Silas has literally roamed mid and actually killed Cassidy in there, which is not ideal. But that's whatever. We're going to be able to break this tower anyway top eventually. So come straight top here. For round number, I don't know what round this is, round three or number four. Set sees me, but I have flash. There's nothing you can really do here. 
do flash and this is going to be a not dead he actually survives that so set flash his flash is back up still whatever we're going to be looking to break this tower Olaf does actually show up here and this is sort of the risk that i did take trying to kill uh silas there probably potentially a little bit risky Cinder was missing as well i potentially should have just i think what definitely i should have done here is actually just scare him off, kill the control ward, and just keep camping here and just let set just keep hitting this tower. So we've actually lost a bit of momentum from this. This is sort of showing a bit of a mistake. Sometimes when you, this is why I said you still need to be smart. I wasn't smart here. I didn't look at where Olaf, I didn't know where Olaf is. I didn't know where Cinder is, and I was punished because of it. So I potentially could have got this top tower even earlier than what we did here. So again, I'm looking top right now. Cinder's low. Everyone's. Looking to base, even though my Krugs are up again, even though technically that's the efficient move, I'm level 6 right now, coming up 10 minutes, I need to snap this tower and look to get Rift Shield as well. So then I can just keep pressing this game. So come top again, and this is going to be the final gank that finally, we've finally broken, we've finally, you know, been that hydraulic press, done our mission. This is a snapped mental Silas and um, top tower. Okay, we actually decide not to get this. So Olaf actually comes defend this. We actually, so I mean, that's not a decision. We just can't. And I use this opportunity actually to do some farming. Okay, and then I come back top. Okay, so unfortunately, I mean, again, this is another example of, it's going to be a bit slow. And this might feel a little bit slow, but we're eventually going to get there. So definitely need to come help my set right now. And he actually unfortunately dies there. So not ideal, but I mean, he still has 85 CS to a 27 CS Silas right now. So... You know, again, this is sort of, you need to be a little bit patient, slow here. I come and defend top. But again, I'm, I'm still staying here constantly because I know I need to, I've spent so much resources in here and this is again the hydraulic press mindset. This needs to snap this tower. So place a control ward here. Waiting for potentially an Olaf to walk in here, but I can't 1v1 him anyway. So I actually can't, I shouldn't be here at all. Sort of just waiting for Set to get back into lane. He's really my strength that I need to be utilizing. Get refueled. And then come back top, make sure my set is getting this tower. And like Silas has literally left that lane because he knows that I'm constantly missing on the map and I will constantly be looking to um, constantly looking to kill him. So notice here, so we've broken levels of that tower before 14 minutes. I do base, so I actually don't want to Rift Shield this at all. And I never use Rift Shield to continue to press the top. All you have to do is do that, and then you need to be breaking either this tower or this tower. Ideally, this tower or the Rift Tower. Mid Tower is the best tower you can be breaking in the game, which is going to give you access to both full top side, bot side, for those second Rift Shields, for those dragons. So then you can also eventually get this tower anyway either. But sometimes you don't have a choice. Sometimes you just need to break bot. But that's why I decided not to Rift there. Unfortunately, we're going to lose Dragon here. And I actually told my set I needed him to go bot side straight after, but he got greedy for a couple of waves, which meant we lost a second Dragon for it, which was not ideal. But now I'm coming looking to now, I mean, now I'm reshifting my Hydraulic Press to be looking to bot and, you know, with my set right now. So I do, do use my ult here. We sort of just need to back off. I think Syndra does kill me. No, we do. I do flash away. That's where flash comes in handy. Turret plates have fallen now. And again, I'm just playing around my set. That's all your mindset. So sort of getting the laser stages. I'm not going to go too much further into this VOD here. But the idea is that once you've made that person your win condition, you've pressed it, you've snapped the top tower, then you need to be constantly playing around them. Stick to them like super glue. So I decided to use Rift Held here now because my set's here. Silas has actually just been backed off. So I know this is a three versus two advantage. And we're going to break this mid tower, which again, I said was the best tower for me to break. That was ideal for us. As soon as I saw an enemy team player low, they need to base. Press that advantage, break mid, where they have no towers right now. This is great position for us to win this game. So just going to wrap up those three examples here. And I will go more into this, talk about my exact mindset in the games in those six bonus videos. I told you that, that I'll be releasing one per day. But I wanted to, this to give you just a baseline of this mindset and how it works so effectively. And we saw the state that Silas's head was in based on that game we gave him. So definitely works. Definitely recommend you trying this. If you have any questions around identifying this specifically, like Nathan, I don't know exactly where I should make my hydraulic press uh, place then that's where i want you to jump into the discord server that i have and continue the discussion there and help you sort of walk you through it because this stuff 
it does sort of come down to game knowledge as well, a little bit more advanced stuff. So we will now continue to jump through the rest of this presentation. A couple more things to focus on, but we will be wrapping this up shortly. Okay, so now talking about use of controls and red sweep with Trinket. I have sprinkled, talked about this a little bit throughout this video, but the big core rule that we need to think about here and with Zin, and this sort of not so much goes for wards as well, but your position, like you are technically a human ward as well. And you saw in those examples of me using myself as a ward just to be securing vision for helping my, my set, my laners, by just simply being there, but obviously you still want to be using control wards for that, um, even to protect them as well once you continue pressing that place. So rule here is vision first, then do jungle camps. Rule here, you could also say is press first and then do camps. But remember, there will be times where you can be efficient as well. So talking about the zombie ward also, zombie ward versus eyeball collection. I will show you a couple of examples in a moment around why I think zombie ward is so good, but it's less about the... Um, the stacks, but more about the actual ward that dies. That's the more important thing. I'm not too worried about scaling. Remember, I don't care about that. As in out, if you scale, that's in threat of that. Remember that four deaths, that 30% chance of winning um, area. So you want to be using your vision, your control, your sweeper trinket around the place you're hydraulic pressing. I don't want you to be using it one side and then you're meant to be hydraulic pressing the other side. That's going to be a waste of your red sweeper trinket. It has on a pretty hefty cooldown as well and also you know control wards you only buy x amount per game let's not be wasting those great to prepare for objectives one to two minutes in advance dragons rift heralds come to an area sweep it get all your zombie ward procs control wards and then that's going to allow the enemy team won't be able to walk into river so vision is super powerful i will go into a couple of examples soon um, I do say here, and I did mention this in my rune section, if you feel like you aren't getting many zombie ward procs, then just I will just tell you to go go eyeball collection. But again, I feel like that the little zombie wards you get, especially when it comes to like dragons, rift shields, I feel like it's so effective. And I will be covering more about this in my um, live commentary gameplay videos, but even though this is going to be a pretty short sort of section, I want to just emphasize that this is very important. As Xin Zhao is an early game jungler, making sure the enemy team doesn't know where you are on the map is power. That is where you can continue to be that hydraulic press safely. Otherwise, they can come and stop you and literally turn the button off of the machine, which you know you don't want happening. All right, let's jump into a little bit, a few examples of showing how effective Zombie Ward can be. Oh, this is going to be pretty short. This is about four examples I'm just going to show you. The other thing as well is using the scrying plant, which you'll see here, just to clear a bunch of vision. So let's take a look at how many zombie ward procs again. And you actually don't need to be actually hitting it. The, when you hit the scrying plant, it's going to allow, even if your teammates kill them, they're going to proc the zombie ward. So I've already got one, two. We see another ward here. I just want to show you just the state of the vision we have right now for this dragon coming up soon. So remember, dragon's coming up soon. This is great for objective control. Another zombie ward proc there. This is another example of sort of setting up vision around a um, dragon. Ideally, I came to set this up a little bit beforehand, but based on this way this game was going, I didn't have the chance there. So I come here, place my control ward here, and this is also using waves as sources of vision. So notice, I don't know where the enemy team is right now. I actually can't come and kill this ward. It's actually really risky for me. So what I'm going to do here, I know Fizz can't walk into here. He's pretty scared of me. So I'm literally just going to push in this whole wave, and then I'm going to go clear vision. And also, I want to also notice, let's go a little bit back here as well, is that, you know, going back to the rule of vision first, then camps, I literally walked past and ignored my raptor camp. Like, I didn't exactly let the um, the caster there just take it for free. My mindset as well was just to ignore it, whether she was going to take them or not. So I push this in. Now I come clear this, get some vision up here. I definitely want to come hit this scrying plant right now just to gain clear vision, but Fizz gets it. I do want to engage on him. So I actually engage on him right now, even though I know the enemy team's a bunch of missing, like Ezreal is here. I'm actually not afraid of them more because this is the, I'm got, This is one of those games where I'm versing that, the heavy AP comp. So I'm actually incredibly tanky. So I can make risky plays like this with my, you know, my MR items. So Eve is here as well. But yeah, so what I want to show you, also the place of control. It's like look at this. So now I'm going to, I'm going to reposition my control order again based on, I know that there's wards here. I know that this is cleared. It's like you're slowly pushing up vision further and further. So unfortunately, Pantheon sort of ults a bit late here. I do place a control ward there. And this is sort of just showing a bit of patience as well. And But we do win this team fight off this. Unfortunately, lose Dragon. But again, want to try to show the pressure we put out for all that vision. 
Okay, another example here, hitting the scrying plant first. I still want to always, if the scrying plant is the priority first, and then it's uh, control wards, and then red sweeper trinket. So I get another control ward proc on the Baron, which is great. Sweep here, just making sure that, looking to get this top tower, that there's nothing here. Place my control ward in that brush. Just to protect the Nasus. So again, it's all just showing you just constantly placing down control wards here. Always buy into two control wards out of base, super important. Place my first control ward here. And I'm actually just engaging on the Fizz right now. I'm going to force him to use his E. And then look at this. I'm going to reposition my control ward around this team fight. Just to make sure that I'm denying vision here. And also in case the fight happens to get into no vision and stuff like that. It's really handy stuff. And another example here, I'm coming top right now just to clear some wards using my red sweeper trinket here. Make sure there's no wards down here. Place my control ward here. Trying to check if there's any wards in here. I didn't actually see any wards because it should have popped up even though it was the last minute. And now I'm going to flank around here and we're going to kill this Jace. So again, using vision to make sure the enemy team doesn't know where you are so that you can make this surprise and Jace decides to commit onto Mundo. And now I just back off. So this is just a couple of examples I wanted to show you around vision again. I'm going to go over this more extensively and talk about my thought process mindset around control wards. But just wanted to put this in this guide here just to make sure that, you know, I'm, I am emphasizing and putting um, priority on it because it's very important. I just didn't put too many examples in here because, I mean, this guide's going pretty long at the moment. So let's now move on to the next stage of this guide. Finally, I'm going to go over an example of probably a worst case scenario, I'd say, for me as a Zin game. I have zero early pressure from an invade, and the worst thing about it is that I this Kane gets incredibly far ahead on me. I think he's like three levels ahead advantage he has of on me, and like double my CS, almost like triple, I think. But the thing is, I, I still apply this hydraulic press mindset. This way, it, this is why I constantly emphasize. This mindset, this this um, analogy that I adopted because it works like all the time. And I mean, even if it doesn't work, it's better than, you know, playing Zin in terms of a late game sort of scaling. This is just so effective. And I have another picture of here of a hydraulic press, you know, looking to crush a diamond. We're going to be crushing diamonds this game. No matter what, we're going to make this area snap. So this is going to be a full game example I'm going to go over. We do end the game at 27 minutes. I will try and go over it as quickly as possible because this guide is getting pretty long. But again, I think this is a really, really good example to show a baseline showing worst case scenario still works. So let's jump into the gameplay now. So talking a bit about the mindset that I had going into this game before the disaster of an early game that happens was, I mean, this is a game where I had insane amounts of options. Like I could easily shut down a Mordekaiser, do my level two gank strategy here. Um, bot lane is okay-ish for me. Nautilus is, I didn't put actually on there. But I feel like Nautilus is actually still a little bit squishy. He's not full, full tank. I mean, obviously he's got his shield. But I do have a Braum and Sivir. And these guys are obviously very, very good to sort of get Snowball in mid-game potential. Cassio into Silas. I, d I mean, I had lots of options in this game. I definitely wanted to do the red Krugs and then look to impact the game like I've shown in a bunch of other examples in this guide. But as we'll see here, it completely goes out of plan and this was actually one of my earlier games and based on this game alone we go for an invade and this is where i stopped invading i'm like i need to get this ward off and i need to do my level two gank strategy so this was actually such a good learning experience game it still works we still you know win this game very quickly by me still applying the hydraulic um press mindset but i just want to show you as well you know what can potentially happen after a disaster sort of me not getting that ward off that i wanted to get even though I could, have, I could have really impacted this early game. So I tell my team to just back off now. I place a ward there. And now I'm going top to do my red. But remember, I haven't done this ward here. So this gank, the level 3 gank strategy is really, really gone now. You know? So now I see Kane and everyone's fighting right now. And I'm like, okay, here we go. What's happening? My Orn's going to die now. I'm not going to get a leash. And now Kane's going to potentially come and take my red buff. So I do get pretty greedy here, and I really should have just beeline straight for his red. So I'm constantly checking the brush right now, and I do... I'm pretty sure I see Kane, yeah. So I see Kane on taking my Raptor camp right here, and now he sees me on red. He's level 2. So again, this is a disaster. I've wasted so much time. I need to concede this now. I don't know what I'm doing right now. There's no way I can kill this. Okay, it's because my Cass and Orn was coming up, so I thought we could maybe fight. But now Silas has roamed up. 
Kane's level two right now. I need to give. He's got a level advantage on me. So here we go. This is the beginning of the disaster of an early game. And again, this is showing just the invades. Like if I just came top or like my team protected this, it would have scared them off and it would have been all good. So I've literally got invaded by Kane, and the worst thing about a Kane as well is because he's a talisman jungler, like I can't just take his raptors and krogs as quickly as as easily as he can. Like he's a very good raptor camp clearer. So this hurts me so hard. It's ridiculous how far behind I'm gonna get from this. So but I mean this is okay. I mean I guess now we're gonna be trading sides of the the map, and then maybe I really do need to just be hydraulic press in bot, but ideally again I could have impacted so much more this game. But I potentially still could have given bot my focus so i decided actually not to gank bot here because i'm so far behind and if i was to do that gank i instantaneously will lose this game and die and we have a huge wave there i just need to really catch up on farm i'm so far behind in terms of momentum right now so I'll do my blue do my Gromp. I just need to get level 3 as well. I remember, this was a Nimbus Cloak game as well that I took the water walking because I thought I was versing a Cane and I was going to be everywhere and have insane early pressure. Again, that's where you want to be looking to take these runes. Again, I've been also denied that opportunity as well. So, coming down bot here. I see a ward here, so I can't gank this, unfortunately. Just need to clear this ward, get my zombie ward proc, but I actually can't even clear that because bot has priority right now. So, they forced me off here. I try and quickly sneak this Rift Scuttler. I'm hoping Nautilus doesn't actually come. This is actually a bit of a risk, to be honest. But they don't decide to advance. Okay, now I'm actually just deciding to just go straight onto this now. I'm like, okay, we have a Braum. Let's try and kill this Nautilus. He flashes. I flash to try and like block the hook there, but that was a bit of a fail there as well. So again, as you can see, I've failed a gank here. Braum's like burnt his flash. Not ideal at all, and Kane's just having a free farm fun. All I've done is gotten, all I've taken is his red, and he's taken my raptors and krogs and everything. Okay, so let's see how we recover. And again, this is the great position, the mindset that I'm going to be showing is like how you want to recover, but still adopt the hydraulic press mindset. So now I'm thinking, okay, well, maybe let's do something mid. The wave is pushing right now. I do see Kane top, so I'm not even going to bother really going top side. The only thing I'm doing here is actually checking my Raptors just to clear it, because sometimes they will um, just leave one little chicken there. So I just want to make sure that I'm trying to like maybe clear it. But me probably killing it is actually helping Kane more than it's actually helping me. So come in down to mid now, and he actually fully cleared it. So um, meaning that camp's back up. But Silas is here. Kane, I know he's top side. Guess what? I need to concede again. So goodbyes in early strength. I'm getting pushed out literally by Silas and Kane. Two champs that I do well into. Remember? All right. So now looking to loop around and maybe I can still go for a gank here. I mean, I just need to do some sort of gank. Silas, again, is a good champion for me to still gank. I see Kane up there. And now I think, okay, well, if we actually lose this 2v2, Kane's level 5 right now, I think. I'm still level 3. So 2v2 wise, I actually don't want to take that at all. So decided to just be looking to go bot here, but I do take the risk this even though I don't know Kane's here. I do have red smite. I do have my full combo. I remember Silas is a champion that I do very well into. But Kane is obviously there. I can't do this gank as again. So even tell I sort of botch up that type and now I do say Kane is there. I can't gank that unfortunately. So look at this, six minutes, zero impact. I'm level three, 16 CS. Kane is level five, 36 CS. How are we going to recover, Nathan? No fear, we have the hydraulic press mindset. So I actually sort of maybe missed the opportunity there, and I sort of apologize to my cast. I mean, I don't actually recommend you apologizing at all to anyone in the game. If, you know, it sucks, it happens, it happens. You know, it was my fault, but... Just keep focusing on what to do next, what to do next. So I just try and finally try and catch up and experience some experience in gold here. Kevin Kane's two kills, zero deaths right now as well. So not ideal at all. So by two control wards, I just need some sort of control right now. Again, right now I'm just choosing bot. My Orn is zero two right now. Mordekaz is level six and stuff now. Top side, see you later. Can't do anything about that, unfortunately. So going bot now with my control wards, Cassio does hit that scrying plant, which is pretty helpful for us. And I'm pretty lucky with the spawns on Rift Scuttler as well here. So there is another bot Rift Scuttler. 
Kane is deciding to... I mean, Kane has so much to do right now. He's probably got decision fatigue. I mean, he could shut me down so easily. He could take my entire top side camps as well. So, decide to come mid here. Cassio does actually a pretty good job to solo kill the Silas there. I'm just here just to protect him, make sure Kane's not popping up. And now I'm looking... So, again, at this point, top side, Kane, you can have it. And he actually has taken all my camps. I think he's taken my red again. Again, I'm level 4 at 7 minutes, so I just decided this opportunity. Alright, let's maybe make 4th win condition, Dragon Soul, 4 drags. Let's just try and do this now. Again, I'm just trying to do something. Just trying to press some area of the map, and that's going to be bot side. So Kane actually jumps over here, and I actually stop the dragon and just be like straight, go onto him now. I actually, unfortunately, missed the smart there. But remember, he's so many so many levels ahead of me right now. He's two levels. Like, his smart does so much more damage. So I actually can't even smart this. I mean, if you look at the health, my smart does 450 damage. And this is, again, showing how disadvantaged I am. I even lose this dragon. So, I mean, like, right here. I mean, I could have smarted here, but I can't. Because it's 497 health to 450, right? So he takes it. There's nothing I can do. His smart does a lot more damage than mine. Two levels ahead. So, again, this is all going all bad for me. But we actually do get the shutdown there, which is actually pretty good. That was potentially worth it. I mean, definitely, I think, worth it. It's going to help us. I mean, he's going to slow down his momentum a little bit. But, you know, we did lose that dragon win condition. Especially if I want bot to make my win condition, I really should have dragon as an additional win condition as well. The four dragon souls. So I decided to actually check my topside jungle here. And I do this just in case, you know, Kane hasn't taken my red or whatever. I thought I did assume he did, but I don't think he actually did. I mean, if you can see here, I mean, look how far behind I am right now. 29 to 58 CS. Top's getting destroyed. Bot is our only hope right now. And mid as well, actually. So bot side of the map, I can. I'm going to use this opportunity because I know Kane's dead. He's unlikely to come to my top side jungle right now. This is my only opportunity I'm going to probably have for the next, like, 10 minutes of the game to clear my top side camp. So use this opportunity, even though I need to be pressing bot. Again, still be looking to be efficient with your time when your opportunities present themselves. So clear those, even clear my Raptor camp. I'm just, again, trying to just clear as much as possible just to deny it all. I'm very safe. I'm not, I'm happy that my bot side camps aren't getting taken right now because Kane hasn't showed on these wards because this is where we've got control. This is where I place my, our control wards, our vision. So pretty happy about this. I've finally cleared my top side, getting some experience and gold back, but I am still pretty far behind. But there goes my bot. Bot wing condition slowly disappearing as well. So the area that I'm pressing... Is, is actually going to be more difficult for me to press. Like, maybe my machine just won't be able to press it because it's indestructible, potentially. Tristana can scale pretty well as well. Okay, so there's nothing more for me to do. I can't press my wing condition right now, so I'm going to just clear my wolves. Hit the scrying plant, just check for some vision. Wait for my bot lane to come back before I gank. I don't want to show on any wards as well, so I don't want to go down here just yet. They've all gone missing. Pretty risky for me. Sweep this to make sure Silas doesn't know I'm here. I'm here more for a counter gank, more so, but Silas does commit to him and get the kill on Silas there. So this is great. I can actually even be pressing mid as my win condition here. But mid tower is always going to be the hardest tower to get. It's much easier to actually press side lanes, and that's why all my examples sort of have shown the successful ones have been through side lanes. All right, going straight bot now. I'm actually going to be looking for a potential dive. So this, I actually don't know if this is water. This is a risk I'm sort of taking, but again, I need to press this place, so... I see K mid, which is great. I go straight on Trist. Knock up the Nautilus. And I don't want to E back into there. Nautilus is going to have hook back up. So we just need to, again, just try and be looking to break this tower. Again, press in. Press, press, eventually you're going to snap. So unfortunately, Cassio dies to Kane there. But we keep denying experience and goal, which is great for, the, for us. So Silas, actually, we do drag him down here. I just ult him off me. I just, we just need to back off here. There's no point risking anything right now. I'm just I need to spend my gold. I need I need to get my warrior. It's a huge item spike, which is going to allow me to press constantly even further. So, I mean, again, if you really look at how far behind I still am, three levels are down right now, 90 CS to 46. So, you know, Kane's still doing a very good job to extend his lead through experience and gold. My only hope is my literally my Sivar Braum Cassio. And again, this is sort of showing that you're not exactly a carry. You're more of a supportive. You know, when you're behind in this position. And this is definitely a game that I'm going to be building full defensive. So, I lose Rift Herald there as well from Kane. But the good thing about this is I can base and get my Rift, my Warrior, which is a huge item spike. 
Okay, so I actually decided not to base because I hope I see another opportunity right now even though I should be getting that item spike. I, I feel so pressured this game that Kane still has Rift Shield and stuff like that right now. I need to do something. I need to keep pressing this. We need to eventually make this snap. So this is again sort of just assessing game state opportunities. Sometimes the opportunities are going to disappear. You need to capitalize on them when that was. This example was that my bot lane, they were pretty hardcore on the bot. So... We actually kill the Trist there, which is really good for us. Look to finally base here. Kane is top side. Get my Warrior. Get my Boots. Two controlled. Super important. I need to be using those to help me be a hydraulic press and press this bot lane. So, uses Rift Shell top. They are going to break top tower first now, unfortunately. But we will get our first dragon of the game, which ideally was our second dragon. But because I was so far behind, we couldn't do that. But bot lane still is on turret plate. And we actually... They actually didn't eventually get top, so that's actually really, really good for us. I think Kane actually does eventually get that. Still do get first tower, but, you know, I still have decided to press this lane. So, Kane gets top tower right now. Going bot. Let's keep going. Use my sweeper, get the zombie ward proc on this. And notice how quickly I just leave this, because I know that they know that I'm there. It's not. There's nothing sneaky about me doing this. There's no way to really push right now. I'm just going to use this opportunity to hit the scrying plant. Maybe potentially look for a counter gank on Cassio. Kane could come down here. But I do eventually still want to help break bot. So I just use this opportunity just to back off. Still some raptor camps, just be a little efficient. Nautilus actually goes and checks the brush, see if I am there. But I'm not. And now coming straight down bot here. So remember, they think that I'm potentially gone now, but I think bot lane... Yeah, I just tell my bot lane to B, because I'm looking at Siva's mana right now. She's pretty low on mana. But they continue to come here, and I now have Cassio, so I'm like, okay, let's do it. Remember, I can't just come and solo kill people. I'm not far further enough ahead right now. So come here, get on Nautilus, and this is great for us. We're now going to break this tower. So Nautilus, people aren't killing him for some reason, but he does die. And now I actually take my red as well. So again, showing right here, I've ignored my top side a lot. After that full clear, I never went there again. Hydraulic press mindset, hydraulic press mindset, keep pressing. You will, it will snap. So I do get that pretty quickly. That was actually a little bit risky. Kane was there. But now my mindset, again, is going to be purely playing around the the champions that I helped press their, um, you know, snap their tower because that's going to be the most further ahead they're going to be they got full five plates actually no, i think they got four plates all right so i need to continue continually concede i mean kane's two two levels still two levels ahead of me he's got red cane form right now i'm pretty weak i do flush away here i'm pretty sure i survive But unfortunately, my Cassio does die there. So probably not worth it. I mean, notice as well, look at the deaths right now. And this is, again, showing correlation a little bit back to, again, I have zero deaths at 15 minutes. And, like, I should have died technically a lot of times this game. But, again, I played smart. I knew when I should take fights. I played around the pressing and played around vision, just ignored Kane because I knew he was so much stronger than me. So, again, this is a going showing deaths keep you in the game. If I had two deaths right now, I probably would have lost this game. Because that would have led to four deaths pretty quickly. So I get my ninja tabs right now. I know that they have some a decent amount of CC, but I mean Tristana. I mean Kane. I'm really thinking as the threat right here. I'm just like I'm just going to get ninja tabs. I mean I'm sort of just going to avoid Mordekaiser well, a lot this game as well. I just need to play around bot, and the most AD that they have is bot because these three is going to be what I'm dealing with. I mean Silas is pretty far behind as well. I don't need to worry too much about magic resist for Silas, but. Um, so just getting ninja tabs there. They do stuff top, so I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to have to concede my top side again, go bot, but I should just be playing around my Sivir again. So clear my Grump. Sivir's starting to actually really pop off. She's got a killing spree. And I'm also here down here as well, because Dragon is coming up in around the next, like, minute, 32 minutes. So if I start, and this is, again, going back to the vision slide. Setting up control wards, setting up vision right now, Preparing for the objective, so it's going to make it very difficult for the enemy team to walk into river and give us opportunities to even catch the enemy team. Alright, so I run for my life right now, get my little cloud boost. Potentially a bit risky for me there to actually be clearing wards, um, but does work out for us. 
hit my W from range. Get another W. I mean, that's a good kneecap break. Not so much the E to something, but sometimes it's good just to get that. If you feel like you can't contribute to fights, just get that W off. It is from range. You're going to be safe. You're not in melee range. This is now going to allow us to potentially break this tower mid. But Kane actually is here. Um, we, uh, this is a situation where I should have really thought about Kane a bit more. This is going to be my first death. Didn't need to take that. I really should have just played more patiently and really thought about where Kane was. A bit of a mistake there from me. Again, sort of showing how strong Kane is. I mean, Kane's three levels ahead of me still. Six and one, 50 CSR. But again, our bot side, we've, I've done a lot more to get impact bot than Kane has able to do. And my, oh, the great thing about Orn is he's going to be tanky regardless, right? So... That's good for us as well. So, people are pinging Cloud Drake right now. Definitely want to be looking to secure that. Again, two controls from base. I am building Sterix Gauge next as well. But if Orn is top, we're probably going to need to give Dragon. So, I'm thinking, all right, this right, we're going to trade Rift Hold for it potentially. I do walk over Control Ward. Definitely need to kill that Nathan. But team's looking to fight. So, I'm like, should I help my team? Should I clear this ward? And they just even reposition the control ward. And even if they reposition the control ward, it does still die, which is a pretty good um, perk of zombie ward. But again, just letting dragon go. Let's just get rift held for it. Trade sides of the map. So they actually get greedy. They try and get dragon and rift held and use opportunity. Really good work by Cast to be there and kill the mord. But now I need to actually potentially... Um, back off here. I do lose Rift Shell for that, that, unfortunately. But just turn on Nautilus, kill him. And he actually still gets the Rift Shell. So maybe I could have tried to go for the smart battle. But I was actually pretty scared of, you know, how strong Kane was. So get another shutdown, which is good. Going to get mid-tower off this, which is a huge objective for us. I mean, look at, based on the early game I have, I have a huge kill participation. 4, 1, and 5 right now. So if you looked at the game right now, you would think I had a great early game, which again was not the case. I was very much pressured, very much starved. I played smart. I was a hydraulic press, remember? All right, so use this opportunity. Now I'm counter jungling Kane, so I'm getting a bit of a lead right now. Still is Gromp as well. Base, definitely need to start spending my gold, get some items. Bot's making a play right now on this Mordekaiser. That's great for them. I think they do kill Mord. But I definitely need to be looking to come help them pretty quickly. Alright, looking to build Stopwatch next. Stopwatch is obviously a really good item for mid-game fights. Really helps me go all in. Enemy team focuses them, me, Stopwatch. And then that's going to really make them um, sweat. So I do tell my team right now, come Baron please. I really want to get Baron ASAP. I mean, if you look how quickly this game's accelerated, it's pretty nuts. Again, based on how far ahead um, I managed to get our bottom mid. Unfortunately, they're still staying bot, but I really want them to be topside. This is where I hate them. I mean, this is part of solo queue as well. I really, I mean, this is the next objective. We need to break top tower, break this. It's going to be very difficult for us to be getting an inhib and tower at 20 minutes, unless we go for a potential dive. So I do decide just to come commit to this, but we really should just be setting up Baron, pushing mid. Because the thing with this is that the enemy team is never going to be able to out push us mid because we still have our tower up. This is technically a, a big wall, which is going to allow us to constantly get mid. Uh, priority, which is going to allow us to get river priority, which is control on Baron. So I get pretty greedy here to try and kill the cane. I get stuck. Um, I really should have just backed off. But, I mean, we should have all backed off. So this is sort of me compensating for the team, and it never works out when you compensate for the team. This is my second death. I'm getting a bit scared, getting into the four death range. You know, that's what we always know the result of the four death range. That's the 30% win rate. Alright, so weights come out of base now. Finally, want to try and pressure topside. Ping in this. We need to push out top. We need to push out mid. Let's start getting control of this. We still have mid tower, which is very good bonus for us. So come in here with my team. Full control. Get my zombie ward procs off. Kane is caught out here, but he's obviously can ear away. Mordekai just runs in. I knock him up. And he does ult. My Braum, unfortunately, so now I'm just sort of on peel mode. I just blow my stopwatch, but Siva's actually really fed right now, which is awesome for us, the fact that I spent a lot of time getting her ahead. And there you go. Team fight win, get Baron. Get my um, two controllers again out of base. I always get in two controllers. Come straight mid, push this out, get pressure of it, priority. I do want this dragon still. I definitely don't want to give the enemy team... They've got two dragons, remember. So one more dragon, they have that fourth win condition. 
Definitely want to secure this dragon. So come here, setting up, getting preparing for it. Again, use of vision here, sweeper, control wards, my zombie ward, um, rune. I mean, the thing about this again, we have full mid priority, but no one's really pushing. Ideally, someone pushed, Cassio pushed out mid again before we started this dragon. It's actually a bit of a sloppy dragon setup, actually, looking back on it. I mean, there's no way they can start dragon. Set it up properly, push out mid, make them wreck to the wave, and then we can move in to do dragon. So I do get the good smite there. Finally, beat a smite battle for the Zin. I mean, Zin's only one level ahead of me right now, so I've definitely caught up. Get the dragon, win this team fight. I mean, we're just too far ahead right now. So we push out mid, looking to get inhibitor. Definitely want to get inhibitor and then just back off. This is all we can get. I actually don't think we actually get this inhibitor, do we? No, so and unfortunately any team will respawn. I mean spawn timers are still pretty low at 23 minutes. So team just dies there, so we need to reset up again. I actually just pressure bot with Cassio right now. And actually go ninja this. So they're actually trying to push mid. So I'm like, actually, I'm just going to go sneak this inhibitor and force them to base and come, you know, match us. So I come help my Cassio right now. Kane's trying to 1v1 her. Just trying to help her. I mean, Cassio is actually really good into Kane. So that's actually really, really good for us. We kill the Kane, get this, but in team's bases. So I think I knock him up here and just flash. I just don't want to get E'd by the Maud. I mean, I can't die here. I just don't want to be dying. Clear some wards, do my Gromp, do my Wolves, base, reset. And then looking to go straight top side here. I am looking to build Guardian Angel next. This is potentially a game I should have actually gone Stone Plate looking back. Um, definitely need to be, um, just especially against sort of sustained damage like this cane and stuff like that, just Stone Plate it up when he ults me and stuff. Mordekaiser and if he ults me... But we actually just win this team fight even without me. I mean, our team's so far ahead. Cassio scales really well. Super's a good scaling. And then they actually surrender. So there you go. Good game of the recovery there. I mean, the key things there is, again, look at the deaths that I had. Zero deaths. Played smart. I knew when to concede my objectives. And I still continued to hone in on that hydraulic press mindset. So I hope this was really helpful for you. And that's going to be the last of the gameplay section. So we'll wrap this out with... The, just the general tips and then a bit of a QA, and a and that's going to be the end of this guide. Okay, here's going to just be some general rule of thumbs and rules that helped me that I followed. Some of these are in hindsight that I didn't really realize until sort of later stages in my Xin guide making that I did those 30 games that I did for this guide. Biggest one, especially when I started, I didn't exactly know too much about the bad Zin matchups and I overforced ganks, especially on champs like Vlad. And I literally lost games off that. I mean, again, I could have increased my win rate much higher if I did know these bad Zin matchups. So never force ganks, especially the level 2 strategy as well in terms of ganking. But if you can't gank it, you can't gank it. It's not worth showing on the map and doing nothing with it. Always try and figure out a way to make bot side my focus for the fourth wing. Uh, dragon wing condition I would always try and think of little ways to do it but remember let's go back to we can't force it but the the, the key word here is figure it figure out if possible so I'd always think bot can it be a wing condition if not then I can do top and I remember I showed you top working really well as well even though I traded some dragons in this guide Think of yourself more as a pure defensive bot more than an aggressive engage past 20 minute mark in the game I actually think this is actually should be 15 minutes into the game uh, I think Zin just works much more better for that. Unless you're playing that Trinity Force, the um, the Alacrity build, rune build that I talked about earlier, and going all in on carry. But other than that, I think he's a much, much more better disengage champion, and especially with his ult and just protecting your carries. Know when to cut your losses and stop putting resources into a certain lane. We definitely figured that out pretty quickly in that review that we just did of the recovery game. But no when to cut your losses. Sometimes you obviously want to be... I mean, obviously the whole t thing we've been talking about is being a hydraulic press and pressing. But sometimes just try and look at something. It's like if it doesn't work once, then maybe just flip it and make something else your win condition. Maybe start pressing the next thing and then making that snap. Like sometimes you need to just know when to cut your losses. And again, that was also shown in the bad early start. 
the recovery game that I showed you. Just I knew when to give up my red to top side, even though theoretically I was much stronger than Kane, I had to based on the circumstances in the game. So be comfortable doing nothing early game if no opportunity presents itself. And that's what I showed in that blue um, path, jungle path that I did for the two options there. It's like, don't force things. That's the big thing. If nothing presents itself, nothing presents itself, just farm. Just be okay with farming. There will be an opportunity that presents itself, whether that's be early dragons. Like, even if you do nothing level four, you still can impact the game for at least like the next four, five, six levels and still be a hydraulic press. Don't be stingy with your ult. Use it. Just use it. It reduces its cooldown from your Q. Um, even if I think it's a guaranteed kill and there's going to be no threat, I just sometimes just use it for the extra damage to make sure they're not flashing out and getting away on 10% health. Really, really good to just not be stingy with it. If engaging in team fights, you're most effective as a follow-up second engage. Definitely. I mean, this sort of goes into the jab as well combo that I talked about. But ideally, someone engages and then you're the follow-up because people are like, oh no, Zin Zhao's on me. Like, I've already used my E for this other person's engage if it's an Ezreal or something like that or their flash. And then you can come in and just one-shot someone. And the other tip as well is that your R blocks ignite summon a spell burn. So these, just some rules to go into your Zin Zhao games. Have these at your back of your head. These helped me big time. Okay, so jumping into some Q&A. This was just some comments that I got on, you know, letting people know my YouTube community, my Discord saying questions around Zin. So I'm going to sort of quickly fly through these. Uh, let's start with Ryan's comment here. How to remain relevant as Zin in the mid and late game besides accelerating the pace of the game? Maybe Zin's role in team fight as a split pusher. So definitely never want to be even getting to a stage of a split pusher. You probably lose to almost every split push champ, honestly, unless you're super far ahead. Remember, I mean, Oh, this is already answered based on <clears throat> everything in this guide, having the hydraulic press mindset and mid to late game, unfortunately, you're not going to remain relevant. Let's end games before 27 minutes. And again, that's coming into the, the analogy of the hydraulic press mindset, being a hydraulic press. How hard are you be falling off? Again, um, game of time here, the... the Zin drops off very hard. You need to be thinking yourself more as a pill slash disengage bot once it starts getting to that you know 30 minute plus mark. But remember, that's in the category where you've probably got about a 30% chance of winning a game because Zin's out does fall off very, very hard. Is Zin blind pickable? So this is a pretty good question. <clears throat> I would like to say in higher ELOs, no. Um can maybe get away with it, but again, I did lose some games flat out there just to the champs that I was playing, like against the Malphites, Vlads, or Blancs, or Sandras. Um, I'm going to give this a 50-50. In lower Elo, I think it's definitely fine to blind pick. You can get your lanes so far ahead because you're going to be having, the again, the mindset here, the hydraulic press that the enemy team just won't know how to deal with it at all, and they'll probably just tilt and just leave the game, honestly. <clears throat> Is he actually worth picking up or is he too one-dimensional? I mean, theoretically, he is one-dimensional, but that one dimension, again, having the hydraulic press mindset, you are going to crush things to the point where it's just unstoppable. They can do nothing about your one dimension. You're going to win the games through being one-dimensional. I'll take that over losing games any day. Um, and I do think he's worth picking up, especially if you're new to jungle. Um, new to jungle or even, I mean, again, I still even recommend him for the high elo, like plat, diamond, plays because he teaches you very very good jungle habits that is going to allow you to expand your other champion pool and even maybe actually help you on other champions just having that knowing when when to go in because it's so punishing when to go in as in other champions have those sort of tools where they can get out pretty easily they're not as punishing but if you're you pretty much like have weights on yourself as in Zao that if you like release you can sort of you know <clears throat> play those champions a bit better. But again, I'm not saying that Zin Zhao is a bad champion by any means. If he's played correctly to this mindset that I've honed in so much on this guide, the hydraulic press mindset, he's a very good champion, unstoppable in some games. Uh, I haven't seen Zin Zhao on any tier list or high statistics like Akram 2, so I guess maybe I need to know why these champs are good and how to play to their win conditions. I mean, I think I've absolutely answered this in this guide, but again, to wrap this sort of up, hydraulic press mindset will adopt that you will win games and just go and camp a lane until it snaps it worked wonders from this game remember i had a 60 percent win rate on zin that i think i could have got much higher if i actually was if i started right now playing zin with everything that i know i feel like i would definitely be able to be pushing to a 65 70 win rate in diamond three diamond four 
So here we go, just gonna wrap up this pretty long guide here. Let me know in the comments below what you thought is. Any question, anything I missed here, I wanna to add to this through my, going over the bonuses. I'm obviously gonna be doing, after this, I'm gonna be recording my six gameplay videos, but also updating a page on my website about Zin Zhao going on to the rest of season 10. I probably will, this will be my only Zin Zhao actual guide for season 10. Season 11, I'll potentially make an updated one, but also join the Discord as well if you want to continue the conversation about Zin. If you have questions from this guide you want to ask me, I will be there or answer them for you. Again, the goal of this guide is to make sure that you're climbing the rank ladder with Zin implement this stuff into your games and then maybe have some questions from it, come to me. I want to help you achieve your ranked dreams and also help you become a much, much better Zim player, one of the best Zim players on your respective server. So that's going to be it for this. Thanks for watching. If you made it this entire way without skipping through anything, absolute props to you. You've literally just sat through like a basically a movie. Um, but obviously you can come back. There'll be timestamps below in the description if you want to revisit any topics in here and you don't need to go through the entire thing. Make that easy for you. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you guys in my next video.